Tiger Beetle sessions, Friday, 28th of January, session 13. Hey, Isaac, what's up? Hey, Aaron. Um, I'll share my screen right away. I haven't done that yet. But last time we basically we had started trying to fuzz the segmented array we've been working on and ended up immediately finding several bugs just by reading through the code. And so we spent most of yesterday kind of just going through this code again um, and fixing all the edge cases we had missed before. Um, and so I think we've nearly finished or entirely finished with that. I think we've got some of the remove left to go through. But we think we've catched or found all the major issues so far. Um, and then once we get that done, we'll be just going back to the fuzz test we got working. We've got we started work on for the segmented array data structure. Um, so I guess we can just hop back into remove. Yeah. Um, I believe we like we looked at this part. I think we hadn't looked beyond that yet, though. Yeah. This is also something we added since we started doing the fuzz testing because we realized that we don't really handle this properly. We didn't handle this properly before. Yeah. Um, so. Shall we add a comment where we say, uh, just to explain why we do relative index plus one less than node capacity on line 15? Because maybe someone might mm. think, are we getting, are we, sh should we be using less than equals to the, and we can say, well, we actually want to do this because we checking for if there's any remaining data after this index, then we shift that. Yeah. It's the same thing as here. I, mean, I don't know. Does it really need a comment? Because we do this everywhere. Okay. Okay. It's also kind of. I think core sounds pretty well to like what's in the code because you're basically checking if this is in bounds. Yeah. If that's not in bounds, then you can't do it. Cool. Same thing here. Just checking if that's in bounds, like if this is not legal operation, I feel like. Yeah. Um, I don't think really, we really need a comment there. Okay. Um, and yeah, if the node is empty, we gonna we check. We the last node. Only the last node is allowed to become empty. Um, okay. At this point, um, yeah, because it is the only node that's allowed to become empty, and that'd be because it always hits this path. Because so we never, um, if a normal node that's not the last node becomes half, becomes less than half, half full, then we'll like join it with its neighbor, yeah. um, essentially, or at least steal some data from the neighbor. Yeah. Um, for the last node, we don't have a, a following node, so we can't do that. Yeah. So we allow it to just get down below half full and for like, or maybe can become empty. Okay. Um, okay. So we yeah. look at remove empty, empty node at then. Yeah. Doing that. We are removing the last node. Node count greater than zero. That's good. Node less than node count. Yeah. And this we use for the last node, uh, and we use it for middle nodes as well. Indeed, yes. The first thing we do is just release the node from the node pool. Then we do these copies. These probably need some balance checking. Um, from the node plus one, yeah. Yeah. The node could be the last node, and so in that case, we don't want to do copies. Yeah. And we can do also the same thing where we set that to null. Um, so here we do this thing where we set the this count or this thing to null, like the one we've copied away from. There's one, we, there's one left we don't use. We need to do the same thing here, I think, and set the 
pointer to null. So that's going to be um, read at counts b. Is that right? I was wondering that too. Isn't it b plus one? Isn't it? Hmm. Actually, no, that, that is right. It just looks wrong somehow. Um, because that is the last thing we, we copy from. It's B plus one is then like one past the end of what we, of what's valid. Yeah. So this is the very last item that we get, that gets copied. This is what we so were indexing with account. And so this is, it's kind of this got is, that inherent. Yeah. It, it, that's what we're removing. Um, we remove the thing at relative index, and then we shift everything after that to the left by one, and then we overwrite the slot that's no longer used at the end. So after this, then we're going to have at the end, you're going to have two duplicate items next to each other. Okay. As you shift, cause, and then we want to remove the, the second one of those so we don't use any more. Okay. Maybe what we can do is do an assert there on array counts b. What kind that, of assert? Um, so yeah, I don't know if we can. I think that's, I think it's not too bad. I mean, mm. it's the right index. Um, pretty sure it makes sense to do it like this. I think yeah. there's not really anything yeah. we can assert there to make it safer or anything. It already gets bounds checked. Yeah. Um, okay, you can cool. do the same thing here essentially too. We'll yes. say, um, You know, we don't need to do it just on count on pointer on pointers though. We can actually do it on the other things. Oh wait, never mind. That is right. But here down below and empty new out, we can do it not just on the point on the items, but we can do it on, on we can do it on pointers, indexes, and counts. Yeah. We set to undefined. Yeah. Oh look, we already do it here. See. Um nice. Never mind. Um Okay, yeah, because this this method works at the node level. The other one works at the element level, like within a node. Yeah. So within a node, we want yep. to set the last element of the node to undefined. Here, we want yep. to actually set the last node to null. The count yep. to zero and the, yeah. Is this right though that we do the we don't do the minus one yet, and we do all that stuff. Then we like do the minus one first here. Yeah. Yeah, we do. So I feel like one of those is probably wrong. I think it's this one too, because I think we thought about the other one pretty well. Um, yeah. What's going on here? So this node count. Yes, this is this is wrong. We need to do the minus one first. We go from node up to the new node count. Yeah. Which is what we want. Yeah. And then, yep. Yeah. Cool. And this all needs to be node count plus one then. So I'm not really sure the best way to do this. I think doing it plus one here is better than doing the yeah. symmetrical copy stuff. Yeah. Okay. And it also makes sense that when we release the node, we immediately decrement node count. Yeah, uh, I agree makes, with that. Makes sense. Only thing now is we just need to check our use of node count. Here is actually fine to do 
the plus is this is this right? No, it's they, say we're deleting the last yeah. node in the whole um array. Yeah. Um in that case we don't do any copy because why don't we do a copy? Because this would be out of bounds, right? Yeah. Node plus yeah. one would be would be out of bounds. But node count is now gonna be it's gonna still get, or node count plus one is still gonna be good. inbounds, right? I think it's actually wrong. Or, no. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, gonna be out of bounds. Yeah. Yeah, so this stuff needs to go inside this this and then I guess. N yeah. No, no, it isn't that. It it's right there. You sure? Yeah, because we do need to do that even if we delete the last node. The yeah. The, yeah, we always need to do that. It's just that we've got the calculation wrong. It should just be array nodes and then array node count um, equals null. We shouldn't have a plus one because what we're doing is we're taking a count and converting it to an yeah, index. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. We had that right before, actually. Yeah. You see, what we did was we moved node count minus one up, but it was already before where we update the metadata. Uh, so we yeah. had it correct. It also matches what we do up here. If yeah. we here we don't we don't do counts plus one here we just do count, which is yeah. right. Okay, cool. So this is right now, and we do it in both cases. That makes sense. But the one thing I'm I'm just wondering, Isaac, is that what we're saying here is that the last node. Okay, so what this method is really doing is if we are if we've got our our nodes like this and now we're removing the last node, then our, our shifting stuff isn't going to run, so we can ignore that. And then what we're saying is we've decreased the node count. Now, the very last thing that we had, which will still be at node count, now node count becomes the index of the last thing. Yeah. Then that we now set to null, and that's all good. And if there is nothing, no nodes anymore, then we set the index to zero. Yeah. Uh, and, and so if this isn't, if this didn't run, then it happens to be that node count equals node at this point. Um, that's right. So we can assert that actually. So in the else branch, yeah. Yeah. Might just make it slightly more readable. Um, yeah. And if we shift things, we're still going to leave that last node undefined. So we still want to do, you know, that metadata update at the end. So that's correct as well. Not right. This feels like not right with this condition. Node plus one is less than array count. That means node less than or equal to array count. So they could already be equal and it could go into this loop, right? Yeah, because we've because we've modified node count above. Oh, that's right. Okay. So what we want to do is say if the node is It shouldn't be node count as the thing. That that should it should be um node or max nodes. Node count max. That's the bug. Not really. Well, this is what we do in the other places, and this is where this works fine. Um, we do no capacity here. And so, think, if, with this change, actually... it will sometimes run with zero size slices. That's yeah. fine because we won't be out of bounds here. I think that's yeah. but I think we shouldn't do it. I think we shouldn't do it this way. We should actually do. You can see it in the assertion in the else branch. We should use keep it in terms of node count, and just say we just need to fix the expression. So if or the condition if node is less than array node count, else assert that it's equal to node count. Then it's more so if node is less than a ray node count. Yeah. 
because that's a bit better. Right, then we. This is after we run the minus one to it. Yeah. I think this doesn't help me reason about if this loop, if this stuff's legal or not very well. Um, it, it's better because now what we're doing is we, we're saying if this, if, if this is the, if this is the last node, we don't have to shift anything. And that's, it's better not to shift anything than to try and shift to zero slice. Uh, this is stricter. Sure. Yeah, that, that's fine. I think um, we just, just need a comment to explain um, above the if and say, if, if there's nothing after this node, then there's nothing to shift. I thought we could just like check if it's the last node, like just check. Is really we're checking it here, but it's like not equal to node count. Um, well, because you can see it was node count. Because usually we'd use node count minus one to. I just want. I, want, I really just want to do this to make it more readable. Um, counts node. Um, or is last node. Yeah. Equals node. Yeah, that's, and then that's nice. Here, just use that. And then here, we don't even need that assert. If that comes back very redundant. Yeah. And, but, and now what we think just, about that. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Uh, I was even wondering if we couldn't just take a pointer to the node and then use defer to update the node count or to release. I don't want to do that. I think that's going to make it harder to read. Because the then yeah, it does mean then we our copy stuff we have to change. But the fact that we update the node count separately from the other metadata, that bugs me that we go we've got like a no man's land where node count is shifting from under us. The reason okay. we do that is to make this stuff like symmetrical. So you have, yeah. don't have to do like plus one here, minus one here. Yeah, it's not too bad though. We can also change that. Yeah. It'll just look like this. Shall we see it, how it looks? I remember we did it for that reason, but, but it's been bugging me that we're changing node count and then acting on it. Yeah, I think it's actually yeah. better like this. And then we can also get rid of that is last node thing and then put node jam back down here. Yeah. Um, uh -oh. I think that's better. And then we just need to update. They also like kind of line up better here. Yeah. I actually like how these line up. Yeah, nice. <laughs> they still like are pretty yeah. symmetrical. Yeah. Um, this is made to be not equal, um, or just less than. You know, then assert equals in the in the else branch. Yeah. That is nice. Okay, yeah, I'm happier with this. Mm. It's much, much nicer. Uh, we can also like, just give a comment here that says, like, if the node, if we are removing, if That explains the the if pretty well. Mm. 
maybe we can say if we are removing the last node, nothing needs to be shifted. Sure. So it would be more concise without the we are, because it's kind of redundant. Yeah. Uh, that's that's cool. fine. All right, should we go fix up the other one to match the style then? I think we should. Yep. Um, yeah. It just seems like now, such, such a curveball to, to update the metadata halfway through. You know? yeah. hmm. We also do these one. We, this one we do all first. Um, yeah. A two do you pick up here tomorrow? That's where we yeah. were. Yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> Get rid of that now. Yeah. Forgot about that two do. Um, yeah, so to like do this in the same order we do below, we could move this up first. And we change this to be, well, it'd be now we use a rate that counts instead of yeah. this we use. You see, it's also so, better yeah. because in the old case, we would only have set the last element to undefined if it was the very last element. So we would have had some cases where we're leaving dangling pointers around even though they were also the last element. They just went the last element. Oh, yeah, last I already element. realized we need to move this outside the F. Yeah. This just needs to not be inside the F statement. But now... These aren't dangling points, though. These are just element. These are just keys or yeah. table infos that we're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's do um, Nothing needs to be shifted. Have relative index here? Or is this like cursor that node? Uh, it's um, it's cursor that relative index, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That wouldn't have compiled, anyways. Okay. So now we've got b dot pointer array dot counts b equals undefined. I think that we also need to do the subtraction somewhere. I think it kind of happens right before we do this. And this also needs to be fixed up. And yeah, we've also got an off by one in the if itself. We need to say if it's less than counts minus one. Oh, yes. So if, uh, certainly if, else branch. if the relative index is before the very last index, yeah. Nice. Okay. We can also like instead of doing this branch in the else, we can here directly before like assert that it's less than or equal to. Yeah. Because then they're like kind of next to each other. Yeah. Instead of having an else branch down below. Cool. I like that style. Yeah. I'll update that below real quick too before I forget. Nice. Um. It also helps to explain the the first condition to show that it can either be the last yeah. index or something before. Yeah. Indeed. I think what we should do though here is when we are updating indexes and things, okay, well, it is the same order as below. I I'm just wondering if node count should be the last thing we, uh, sorry, array.counts. I feel like that should be the very last thing we change. Um, I don't really mind doing it this way. If we do okay. it differently, then we have to do every that counts minus one here. Um, and here we should also be, this is just wrong. What is this? This, this actually makes sense. This is right. Yeah. He's saying, B is not the last node. Hmm. 
but it really should be like less than this thing minus one. Yeah. Let's add but a comment. Uh, also, also correspond it, to this directly. Yeah. yeah. It was better before. I think we should add a comment to that also to say that if we remove an element, this causes all the indexes of subsequent nodes to shift. Because otherwise, um, we might wonder why are we updating nodes here if we're removing an element? Uh, just, just so that someone reading this code, they can kind of step through the comments and get a big idea of what the code's doing without having to figure it out, you know? That's nice, yeah. How's that? Yeah. We could just say of subsequent nodes to be shifted. So now what we're saying is, if B is not the last node, if B is not the last node, then for all the nodes after B, Ah, oh, nice. Yeah. We can just change this to say, I'm going to make this match the other one, yeah. and then also assert B. Yeah, that's nice, Isaac. And then, so then for all nodes after B, up to array node count, which we haven't modified, then Go and tweak. Yeah, this one has a modified. Yeah. Yep. Cool. This is this is good. Yeah. We could even do that for loop as a one liner, if you're happy, or if maybe. Mm, I thought it was more readable like this last time. But I think that might have been before we had indexes or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um. It, and if we yeah just like that yeah. That took me way too long. I guess that's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, now the node is empty. Now we're going to remove that node. I think that's all correct. Yeah, we've already looked at this stuff too. Mm. This all looks good to me. Um, yeah, this is stuff we, already, we all just looked at. We didn't really look at this too carefully, but I think it's right, probably. At least I didn't. Um, so if node count, if the new node count is greater than zero, then we can we update indexes or index based on the previous thing. Yeah. This seems kind of tricky. Um, oh, it's actually wrong. Yeah. Do we even need to do this? Why do we need to do this? We're just trying to keep our um, our data as valid as it can be. Yeah, well, we don't need to update this though because the node we removed had no nothing had no nothing in it. We assert the count is equal to zero here. That means we already have to have updated the indexes. And so this is doing nothing. I'm pretty sure. If there's no point of having this at all.
I... You can turn this into an assertion instead, if you like, but there's nothing, this isn't doing actual use, anything that needs to be done. So the indexes are already correct. Uh, so if if this is the so we're removing this node say we're removing it from the middle we'll say we're removing it from the end okay so what we're actually doing is we're saying the index of the node that's out of that is now out of bounds yeah we're, we're setting that index to something which is oh, correct, I correct. forgot we were doing that node. For some reason, I thought we were talking about the node that we removed, yeah. which didn't make any sense. Yeah. Okay, this makes sense again, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so it should, it should be illegal to even access this index. Yeah, but we're just kind of resetting it to make it just in sync with the rest of the state. Yeah. Which I guess is a reasonable thing to do. Yeah. Um, Can we set it to undefined? I'd be fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. We do set like these ones to null and zero, though. Honestly, yeah. I'd be fine saying counts and this index to undefined, though. It'll be more likely for us to catch the bug if we get those wrong. Yeah. Um, like we should never access these things. No. We must really just do that. Yeah. And the reason, one reason we use null here is because it's even more likely that we'll catch the bug, or it's pretty much yeah. guaranteed that we'll get a crash in this case. Yeah. Yeah. Undefined is a little bit harder for us to get a guaranteed crash because it's just like technically not very easy to think to do. Yeah. But we'll at least see like the OXAA bits and debug builds if we ever hit some bug related to that. Yeah, cool. Nice. And um, the upstairs, we do something where we set counts to zero when we in when we inserting the first node. I think that we should just check there because that might have been part of why we did it this way. But I do like that we do that. This? Find. Yeah, this makes sense. We inserted basically an empty node, and then we immediately put something in it. Yeah, these these things do need to be valid. Yeah. Um, Cool. That makes sense. So now we're back into here, I guess. If we're, if we're happy with it, remove if you know that. Actually, and that it's now fits on one screen of this screen size. Nice. Kind of nice. Yeah, very cool. I was thinking we, sh we should ask um, DJ once we're done with this just to review the code to, to check if he sure. can see anything. But I'm glad we, we're reviewing it like this too. It's, uh, okay. Yeah, I feel like it's hard to review our code right if we've written it, but like after like a, a day or two, then we can come back and with, with fresh eyes and like find all the bugs. Yeah. Or I can feel like you can't review it right away after you've just written it. Yeah. Then we're like too caught up with when how to do things instead of how to get it right. Yeah. That's kind of like the the uh, yeah. issue. It's like, I've no, I've noticed, it like as, as yeah. Yeah, I've noticed sometimes we have like our our clean code hat on, and and then sometimes we have our security hat on. And yeah. You know, and like also when we're, when we're writing new code, we're usually thinking mostly about like what the right algorithm is. And yeah. so right, what we're doing right now, it doesn't actually change the algorithm at all, but it makes just like the little details all right. Correct. And yeah. so we're, we're kind of thinking about different things then and now. Yeah. Like when we wrote this code versus now fixing it. Yeah. Because before we were like kind of debating what is the right strategy here? What do we do to, how do we remove nodes? Um, exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. that kind of stuff. That's a good point. Now we've decided on that, at least for now. And yeah. we're fixing the actual implementation. Yeah, this is kind okay. of like like a polish stage. 
we we had written everything up, yeah. figured it out, and now we're really polishing, like just spending a bit extra yeah. time. Yeah. Okay, so the last node is allowed to be less than half full. In that case, we just return. Then we do this bit. This is like the last bit of code we need to review now, I guess. C is B plus 1. It's got to be in bounds because B is not the last node. C pointer is that. B count. C count. Okay. What we could do there is assert that that those are greater than zero, those counts. Sure. Just because it would be surprising if they weren't, you know? Um, that's actually wrong. B count can be zero. Ah, uh, okay. But actually, we we handled that early. Um, never mind. It can't it can't be zero at this point. You're right. Okay. We we handle that here. Yeah. Cool. This is good. Good good idea. All right. If B count is less than half, then we decide to do something. Otherwise, we do nothing at all, and that's good. Yeah. Um. So if B count plus C count is less than or equal to no capacity, um, this is also the right, that's the right comparator there, I'm pretty sure. Mm. So we're dealing with two counts, the counts and the capacity. Um, we could, Isaac, and this um, is saying, we could also assert um, that B count is less than or equal to node capacity and C count is less than or equal to node capacity. Um, sorry, could you repeat that? You broke up a little bit there. <laughs> Okay, uh, we should also maybe assert that B and C counts are both less than equal to node capacity individually. Sure. Because it might be that somehow we've got some illegal count data, so we end up with a massive count, then this would catch it. Do you want to like do it like this then? Or... Oops. Yeah. That's cool. And then maybe like, I don't know, playing with this a little bit. I think this is now maybe even better. Okay. That's just B count plus C count less than or equal to no capacity. So if all the elements in B and C fit in a single node, then we're going to put them in one node and get rid of this other node. Yeah. And so we do, um, yeah, you know, I'm not sure this is the right, this is the, we could tune this, we could, I think we can tune this ratio because what happens if there's like all, common inserts and, re, and deletions from like a single area of the tree? So you can like end up like flipping back and forth between across this this boundary very like every time you insert or remove from the tree, um, yeah. which then means you need to like do a copy every time. Yeah. Maybe this is worth putting a little bit lower than their capacity, but we can come back to that. I'll leave a to do here. Um, yeah. Should we um, check for? Like 100%. It's an optimization, though. It's not for correctness. Yeah. And so, let's not worry about that yet. 
maybe we can say in order to optimize um, or, or just make it clear that this is an optimization. Yeah. Um, or we can say avoid. Yeah. As an optimization. Hmm. That makes it very clear, I think. Yeah. Maybe like we can a... we can add a question after that and say with this with this opt maybe like this with this optimization break our static allocation guarantees. And yeah, it could. You're right. Static allocation. But I'm pretty sure we could also solve it by allocating a bit more. But maybe that's not worth it then. Mm. Anyhow, something to think about, I guess. We should get back focused on actually fixing the code, though. Um, no, that's good. Um, that, cool. That's a great, great idea there, that question. Because you see the problem, right? Like, if we. If we like hit this check and then join the nodes, and then we insert to this new full node on the next iteration, and then the node gets split again. Mm. Then if we remove that one element from the former node, then it will get joined again. Yeah. And then they can end up being joined and split every every um, like insert remove cycle. Yeah. So what we would do then is say. Um, say only or don't join them when they're when they're 100 percent or don't join them right away if they all fit instead wait till they would be like 90 percent full or something but i think you're right that that does break our stack allocation so maybe this isn't really a good idea yeah um because b counts maybe it's not a, a common enough case that it matters like this may this probably isn't the case we need to optimize for. Yeah, it's only when you when B is less than half, it keeps dipping below half. But as soon as it gets a little bit further, then it's fine. Because well, um, no, it's, I mean, anytime B is less than half, then we need to merge it. Then we need to join it. Yeah. Something. But I think it would, it would break our. Static allocation because we would yeah, then have would. nodes that are less than half, and then then we wouldn't have any guarantee. Or what we could do is we can say nodes can be less than forty percent full. Exactly. Yeah. And but, so we could we could change the half to forty percent. Yeah. And then here, yeah. But then, but we still have the problem even at forty percent. You can still alternate there that boundary. Um, but there's a buffer there because the, when you when you um, split nodes, yeah, so splitting nodes happens when they get full, right? Yeah. And so if splitting nodes happen once they get completely full, it will split into two two fifty percent nodes. Yeah. Um, but then those nodes won't get rejoined until one of them drops below forty percent, and so you've got like a ten percent buffer then. Yeah. Um. Of joint of of additions you can do or removals you can do um, before the noise get rejoined. Yeah, that'd be the advantage. Yeah, it would be quite a like it would increase our static allocation by ten ten percent or more or what. Uh, um. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, it'd be a good chunk more memory for sure. Yeah. Maybe we should just get rid of this idea. I'm not sure. I, th I think so. I think the 50 is good. Yeah. I was wondering if we couldn't cool. do it, could do it the other way that we, we try and join nodes more eagerly if they are less than 80%, then we try and, but if we tweak the threshold in the other direction, you know? 
You can't really though, because the, you you never have nodes that are less than half full. Yeah. And so the only case where you can join nodes is when both nodes are exactly half full. Um you only ever look at two nodes at once. Yeah. So what I was thinking, Isaac, like this outer branch, we, we actually only get into this joining code if B is less than half. Otherwise, yeah. we don't do That's anything. That's the only place where we could possibly join, I believe. Yeah. So I was thinking we can have a, a earlier trigger. We can say if, and that might also help us to fix the splitting alternating thing. So what we could do is say, if B is now less than 60%, see if we can join it with a neighbor. Because the, okay, but the neighbor is gonna not be less than 50. So. But no, exactly. Yeah, so it doesn't work. Unless we start looking at both neighbors, then it could work. Yeah, and so if you look at both neighbors, then they all have to be less than 66%, and then you can yeah. join the three nodes into two nodes. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a pretty significant code change, though. I think we should just stick with our current code and fix, finish fixing it and fuzz test it, and then we can maybe think about that kind of thing. Yeah, no, um, I'm, I'm, we're good enough for now. We can do this in a year's time. So I mean, well, yeah. New capacity over two. Because then, then for static right? allocation, no. um, go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, then for static allocation, we could reduce our memory considerably, like if we have our easiest um, threshold to merge. You know. Well, it would depend on how we split nodes, really. Um, mm. Does that mean we also mean we have to split nodes then when they get? Um, like when, when when a node gets full, it's actually kind of. I'm not sure if we can really do that. We'd want to like yeah. split it into two nodes that are both 66% full, but that can't. You can't do yeah, that. You can't do that. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, I think so, this this intuition that you know a node is at least half full. That's very nice because it just works yeah. everywhere. Yeah, it's uh, uh, scratch my idea. Also, our numbers likely to be divisible by three or two than they are to be divisible by three yeah and that can get quite awkward with them um, off by ones yeah definitely you know, then actually yeah yeah okay so if if right. b and b and c um, together uh, sorry Ozzy? yeah i wonder if we know a bug here because um if b count is less than half then c count could actually be like one more than half and this would be true right so maybe we should move this condition, like, or put this condition first. Would we even need this condition? We need it, we need it here, I think. I think this is what we should do. We get rid of this condition here and just put it here. Because this, this actually kind of implies that... Um, B count and C count are both, well, B count is allowed to be one less than half, but C count's not allowed to be. No, so we can yeah. assert that C count's greater than, equal, greater than half here, actually. I, I was just going to say that, yeah. It can be greater than or equal to half. Yeah. Um, yes. And we can do the opposite of certain B count where we've now um, it's greater than equal to half minus one. Yeah. Okay. Much, much better. And so, yeah. And now this is now we'll catch. Now we'll actually enter this branch in the case where B count is one less than half, and C count is equal to half plus one. Otherwise, yeah. we wouldn't have hit this branch. We we would have still, because um, we would have we would have said is B count less than half? It is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But if B count's equal to half and C count's also equal to half, then we'll hit this branch. We wouldn't have hit uh, it before. Oh, good, good catch. That's what it was. Nice. 
Ja. And so, yeah. Nice. That, that's good then, I think. Yeah, this and, is but cool. But if we can't equal to half, we won't hit this branch because we, here we check for less than half because that's our hard constraint. And mm -hmm. so we, we join things a little bit sooner this way, yeah. which I think is good. Yeah. Cool. And now let's look at the joining code. Um, so B pointer, or we're copying from C pointer um, zero up to C count. So everything from the C node into um, the B node starting at, at or starting at the point where it's empty, going up a C count. Yep. And this is gets balance checked in node capacity, in node capacity then, because this slice will go up to node capacity. Um, yeah. Yeah. And we should add C count to the B count and set C count to zero and then remove the node. This is this seems really really nice and simple. I like this. Yeah. yeah. Can this fit on one line? Yeah, totally nice. can, yeah. Nice. It it does actually read nicely on multiple lines because you can see Yeah, I was just thinking that. I was just like, yeah. hmm, do I really like it like that more? I kinda yeah. like it like this. Yeah. So like we already we always have like this in other places. Yeah. Um, For copies and that I really like it sometimes when we do multi line stuff and inline. Yeah. Uh, without I, just like, I don't like yeah. this either. I, Ideal, I feel like, would be like uh, this somehow, <laughs> but that's not very big. Farmer doesn't like that, of course. <laughs> you can just put a trailing comma in and close our eyes. Runzig for Runzig format. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's very really right, nice. So and remove empty nodes branch now, is, is going to set stuff to null and undefined and everything. Yeah, so this will just assert on the count and then it'll actually get rid of the node and set everything to null and all that stuff. We just looked at it. Yeah. Does all that stuff. And this is all good. This also got way cleaner. I'm really yeah. happy with how the code's turning out with this pa second pass through it. Yeah. Um, before I was definitely like, Thinking our fuzz test is going to catch a lot of bugs, but now I think it won't catch hardly any. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. It will be nice. Like if by the time we run our test, it just passes. Then, then that's really great. Yeah. yeah. Like it did for the node pool. Yeah. Um, that's much simpler though, from this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because so yeah, count is less than half. Now, oh, sorry. We, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Now what we're doing is we getting. We're exploring the negative space beyond. We're pushing past the the implementation positive space yeah. into negative space, like um, deepening our understanding, and that's more important than the fuzz test because we can't always guarantee that the fuzz test will find everything. But if if we know right, that we right. really understand stuff solidly, then that's that's better than just you know running the fuzz. I was mm. thinking too, you know, on the on the node, the node pool technique that we came up with, perhaps we could do that eventually for message pool, the same thing, because that'll let let us catch if we double free a message. Back into the pool. Okay, so using a free set instead of a linked list, kind of. Yeah, and it will save a bit of memory, you know, for all the message pointers and that. Actually, no, because we already need the pointers for our FIFOs um, in BSR uh, and in the message bot. Okay, so we it's not like we have extra bookkeeping in the pool for that linked list. No. Okay. okay. They'd catch double freeze, but that's it. Um, yeah. We yeah. also just add it. Well, we don't really test. We could add it like, only in debug mode just to like double check to prevent double freeze. That might be nice. Yeah. But I think using that in our final code isn't really a good idea because I think the, the linked list based approach is already super efficient and doesn't use extra memory because we already need that memory anyways. Yeah. Um, but won't, uh, won't the bit set be just as efficient? I don't know. I think just doing a, the pointer arithmetic, it's like looking up a thing in a bit set is like ON, right? Um, that's not ON really. It's 
At least it's still O one, but it's it's different. It's hard to say which one will be faster. They're both O yeah. one. Yeah. Um, insert and removal. Yeah, the bit set will be pretty small because we've only got a hundred bits or something. So it's it's like two two machine words. True. But and then it, yeah, I mean, we, it, what we have right now is also super simple though. We yeah. just like do one branch, then we just do that two th two things to update the ink length list. Mm. Just do two assignments, and then references and return it it's it's pretty straightforward yeah um, no, I, and, and I, yeah, I, yeah i'm with you on that i just thought it would be nice for the extra safety at runtime that we can check against the but just just an idea yeah i mean that'll, yeah i think it's not a bad idea we should probably just do it in at least for the debug mode mm. um and we okay cool we and we, I was thinking we could even reuse the node pool implementation with our message type and that becomes our um, I don't know how how it doesn't matter how we have message tracks right now we also haven't done this yet <laughs> it's a to do ah uh, yeah yeah. I've just been thinking about this also because DJ is working on working out our static allocation. Uh, right. Cool. Sorry, finish up this stuff first. Yeah. Or yeah. now. Yeah, this, this me. Um, so I was just looking at this and I realized this two copy is always going to be like just one. Because as soon as B count is less than half, then we'll end up hitting this branch. We only remove one thing at a time, and so two copies is just going to be one element, really. We, this half minus B count will always be one. Yeah. Um, Good. Shall we assert that? Um, yeah. Probably. We can get then also like get rid of these mem.copy calls and just assign it. And yeah. Instead of using two copy everywhere, you can use just one. Yeah. I like um, that. I, I, the, the question is whether we want this code, if we're going to do like batching or bulk inserts and whatnot, we would then actually want to have this code as it is right now with the two copy. Okay. So if you can remove two things at once, then you do want it to be like this. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Should we just get rid of the two copy for now? And so anyway, we'll need to make tons of other code changes as well. So it's probably going to get, end up being different enough from structure. This doesn't really help us to have this code. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, let, let's make it right for here, and then we'll our batch batch stuff will be a separate implementation. You know. Is that the right assert? Is that or is that the best way to write this assert? Half minus b can equals one. Yeah. Okay. And then it's going to be. Um, B pointer. So we do need this mem. We do need this copy still. Well, we can, we can just become ones instead of two copy. Um, B pointer uh, at B count equals um, C pointer at zero, and then that's this mem not copy. Then here we're going to do, instead of two copies, we see count minus one and one. Okay, cool. Hey, Isaac, I've got an idea. Uh, instead of saying B pointer, C pointer, we should say B elements and C elements. Sure, yeah. Because it gives you, I get confused whether we're working with nodes or elements. Remember earlier, you, you corrected me also. Yeah. Then it just tells you clearer like what's in that, what's in the pointer. Oh, 
That's better, yeah. Yeah. I'll put this in one line too, but I think we probably prefer it like it was. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, the uh, B counts uh, B counts for B must be half. I think the count for C can be greater than or equal to half. Mm. Yeah. Well, no, because otherwise we would have hit this branch. It must be greater than half. It it starts off greater than half. But after we've removed an element from it, it could then end up being half. No, because B is less than half. And so if C was, if C count was half plus one at this point, and B count was able to pass this check, that means B count is half minus one, then this check would be true and we hit this branch instead. Uh, okay. So maybe we can assert so, on that. We can assert on C count here and say C count has to be um, greater than half plus one. Okay, you mean which... up here at the top of this branch? Yeah. Or what? We already heard that it's greater than half here. Yeah, but maybe just to help help me out next time, then I can see like, oh, we only expect to get in here. We, otherwise, we expect that we got into the first branch. Sorry, what, what, what assert do you want to add where? Uh, so... Um... So at the top of this branch, um, we can say that we expect array count C is greater than half plus one. Otherwise, we would have been in the top branch. And then let, let's move that just after the B assert, yeah. Because now we're kind of checking the first condition, which I missed. Yeah. And if you like, we could even the B count assert, we could say assert that B count equals half minus one. Then it lines up a bit sure. with C count assert. Oops. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's more. I, I mean, yes, the C count assert here more is just human documentation. So someone looking at this can sure, see, oh, yeah. oh, like we don't expect to even get here. You know? I think it makes sense. Yeah. 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 It just makes it very clear what we expect in this branch. Yeah. I think we are guaranteed to hit this too because we have this first. Yeah. Which is also good. So I think we did that. Um, we've got removed now. Totally checked through. Yeah. The last one to go through would be iterator, I think. Yeah. Um, also, the, also, the first thing... some of this. Of it. Yeah. Sorry? Also, the first thing we worked on, the iterator here. Indeed, yes. So I think we've got an assertion failure where our first or last methods will return like a zero node, even if the array is empty. So a start node could be zero, but the node count is also zero. Okay. Like what, yeah, what happens if, the nodes... if, yeah, we try to, if we try to iterate an empty segmented array? Yeah, and so you were not be initialized in the done state. We'll use at least one element. So this, this comment's also just wrong then, because we I think we do need to allow this. Mm. Maybe this is the kind of assert that we need 
at the call site, wherever we're using this iterator, we can then assert that the segmented array count is greater than zero. We should be doing I think we there. do do that, actually. Um, okay. So here, interview start. Yeah, so here we create like just a done iterator in the case that this returns a zero length. So root dot length equals zero would be equivalent to the segmented arrays both having zero length. Oh, okay. And if that's not true, then there must be at least one element in our array. And so I think yeah. we actually are fine with yeah. how we use iterator currently. Okay. Shall we document it? may seem like a little strange, because yeah. like usually an iterator on an empty thing will just return you zero. Yeah. And so we could also special case that. So we, can move, we could move this part like inside. Um, I think how we have it right now is actually fine. Um, so I guess for like range queries, it might, well, you know, we'd use this outer iterator though for like actually querying the manifest level yeah. as a whole. This one does return an empty iterator yeah. if you if it's if the level's empty. Yeah. And that, that one actually handles the case of the empty segmented array plus the case of where we go left to go right, go right to go left. So that's like mm -hmm. um, good to have it at a higher level. Yeah. So maybe this is fine to assert that there's at least one element in our segmented array when we when an iterator is called. And shall we document it for the in, in, interface and say that this iterator may only be sure. called if if it has if it is non-empty? Or should we just change it that it just works for non-empty stuff? Well, we don't use it in that case yet, so we don't need that code. Okay. Because we do, we do like allow it in other cases. Like if you call first or last node, you can call that even though it's empty. Okay, I think it also would help the test too. Because right now the tests are gonna crash because they were calling it an iter empty iterator sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And so, so I think we just need to initialize the. We just need to do this essentially. You just return this. Yeah. Um. It's not break block and says return. Then we just have an if here. It says if um, array count. Okay. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's that's good. But we also use the count function. You're right. But I think that does more work than we need to. Yeah. They may get inlined, but it, it it this is more this is just simpler. Yeah. If we wanted to have an empty function, we could have that that just does this, but I think that's just needless abstraction. Yeah. Um it's nice to to not use our helpers too much or so. Yeah. Should we set array to undefined or leave it as actually the actual array pointer? We should leave, yeah, leave it as as what we what if we do have a valid value, then we should use it. Uh, should we set these to zero then? Yeah. Cool. That seems safer. Yeah. That matches the semantics of first and last. Mm hmm Yeah. Cool. Cool. Now, uh, we can maybe drop the comment above our precondition asserts. OK, yeah. Uh, Isaac, what do you think? Um, if we know that the array is empty, perhaps we want to assert the absolute index then. Um, we want to assert yeah, that. We should definitely assert that, yeah. Yeah. Um, assert that it's zero and that the start node is zero. Yeah. 
then I think we can add a new line after those because those are like branch. It's still like the function sure, positions. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And absolute index is less than element count max. Uh, and it's less than the last nodes count. That's correct. Yeah, that's all perfect. Eh? Those preconditions are done. These asserts look good, yeah. Mm. We do have to do the indexes plus counts here because we don't have an indexes at node count. This would be out of bounds then, potentially. Yeah. We should index this node count. Cool. Now let's do a setting direction, I guess. Um, so index is greater than or equal to index's start node. Yeah. And so this kind of just asserts our start node is an absolute index agree on where to start iterating. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We're checking that they're in sync. Uh, uh, agree. Yeah. Our use head is better. Then we say, um, if the next node exists, and yep, if we're not the last node, and our absolute index is greater than the start of the next node, then go to the next node. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm pretty confident this loop's right. We've looked at it recently. We looked at, we looked at this part yesterday, too, because we yeah. had some things we changed in these conditions. Uh, yeah. The relative index assert also is good. Just absolute index minus index is node, and then assert that that's less than the counts. Then we just create our thing, and we're, oh, are we missing something here? Oh, you know, we've got the wrong things here, because this now, takes, this now uses a cursor. Uh, Redirection cursor. Uh, dot node. Zig's uh, struct literals are so nice. Oh, yeah. Um, do the same thing here, I suppose. Mm. Oh, that was the wrong thing. Why'd I do that? I think using undefined is the right thing to do here. Um, I think we should do, do like a we return like a valid stuff instead. Yeah. Um. Oh, uh, it's actually going to be level dot tables. Oh uh, yeah. Mm. Cursor is going to be. Kind of having the cursor on one line is actually not bad. Yeah, that's cool. Those it's just, zeros. Just two things. Yeah. Cool. And here I do like having it separate though. Oh, mm. and done is false by default. That makes sense. Cool. Mm. This looks good to me though. I'm descending now. Absolute index is less than array index's start node plus array count start node. And so we do this because start node could be the last node. And so we can't just do array dot index is start node plus one. Yeah. Okay. Node equals start node. Well, node is greater than zero, and the absolute index is less than array dot index is node. This one. Then yeah. go go to the previous node. Yep. That's all good. Yeah. This is these two lines are the same as above, which makes sense. Mm. And then. Yep. I'm, not, I'm uh, happy with all that. So let's cool. look at the actual iterator then. Uh, Isaac, Last I was thinking maybe 
maybe we should take our where we return the empty iterator here um, put that into a helper function a constructor called iterator empty and then we can use that also um, outside of segmented array so it, sure. within manifest level so that manifest level doesn't have to think about how an empty iterator looks for this So when do we actually return null here? You turn it once here and once here. And so we can't we wouldn't be able to do these asserts. Um, hmm. Yes, yeah, so it is that is right for the semantics of using zero for the cursor and relative index there in this case as well. Yeah. Um, yes, what do we do? Should we make a function? Just have a, is it yeah. also, we want to have a, like taking an array pointer in a direction though, because then it has, otherwise it's not really valid. Yeah. Honestly, I think we just having it like this is fine. Okay. It's very, yeah. Yeah, cool. It also makes it uh, it's explicit, like it's a, we don't have to go spelunking yeah. to figure out now. Okay. Yeah, it's very clear what it is, and the done equals two, I think, is the the key thing, yeah. of course. Yeah. It should be pretty easy to read in that code because the cause the iterator code is also, itself is also like pretty short. It's just this one function really. Yeah. And the first thing is if done return all. So it's pretty clear what will happen there. Cool. Um. Cool. Elements, where is elements coming from? <laughs> I guess here. <laughs> so yeah. Um, we'll move that up above there. An element, I guess, we go up as well. Just make them... uh, uh, yeah, sorry, so. just a second, Isaac. I'm back now. All right. Cool. Hey, thanks. Uh, Kieran was just checking what uh, what we're doing for lunch. Cool. All right. I think this all makes sense now that we've switched up around these or these uh, the order of these two things. Yeah. Um. So I guess we should just hoist I mean, the one. This sort of yeah. completely redundant with this that with this balance check here on the slice. Maybe we should just get rid of it. Yeah. Here we index into elements using this cursor to relative index, which yeah. will assert this. Yeah. And this one can then be moved up because it's not dependent on this. Yeah. Okay. I think that's yeah. better. much better. Sending, we check cursor that relative index equal, is equal to the last index. If we're at the last element in a node, then we check if we're at the last node in the array. If we are, we set done equals true. Otherwise, we increment our node and set the relative index to zero. That seems really nice. Yeah. yeah I think this code we did, we did a good job of. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we actually came over this code many times. Like we reviewed it again and again and again. Yeah. Yeah, this seems really solid. I think we're not going to find any bugs here, but 
you know, those are big words, so you never know what the fuzz test will turn up. Um, and if it's not equal to the last element, then we increment it. For descending, we check is the cursor is the relative index zero. If it is zero, we check if the node is zero, then we're done. Um, otherwise, we subtract one from the node. Move to the next node and set the relative index to um, the last element in last. that node. Yeah. And if the relative index is not zero, we subtract one from it. Then we return the element. And these relative index and cursor node we're calculating are for the next iteration. Um, yeah. So even if we do set done, um, that means that cursor node and relative index were zero when we started this iteration. So what happens yeah. is that we're about to return the very last element, but we set done, so the next call to this returns null. Yeah. I'm happy with all that stuff. That seems that seems great. Um, cool. Yeah, beautiful code there. Oh, yeah. And yeah, making it symmetrical really helped us, I think, because now, like, all the... Yeah, there's no, like difference between the two cases really yeah all right so back to fuzz tests then i guess um yeah we did um oh uh, there was one more thing maybe we should just grab through all our pub function definitions and group them so we have all our pub functions at the top for sure and just basically check the functions that we have like is there anything we don't need split note of falls not pub um, let me just grab all the pub ones to the top and then maybe remove elements mm -hmm. and well, I kind of like having like, like the organization kind of makes sense though too because an insert element uses these two functions below it it's like split node of full and split node okay and then insert empty node out. these are all part or used inside of insert elements it's like okay. these three functions in a row are all insertion and then we've got remove it remove it elements remove element and then also the helper for that cool I'm not sure really grouping the pub functions helps. The small ones we could definitely group up, like these ones, these little ones we could put up top. Yeah. Um, just basically to just double check if there's any we've missed, uh, like node elements. That we don't want. Um, yeah. Do we use element anywhere? I feel like we might not, but I don't know. Yeah. Let's go check if we do. Uh, um, yeah, looks like we do. do. Yeah. In this assert here, at least. Which is good, good to have. Moment. Oh, uh, it's based on a cursor. Yeah, I think it is nice to have. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, just cleans up the code a little bit in the call site. Yeah. Node elements also definitely make sense first and last. Then we've got absolute index recursor, which we do use in node is over here. Yeah. Yeah, best level in iterator. We use it to start the iterators. Yeah. And it really just does a bunch of asserts and does some very trivial stuff. Yeah. So it's a good function. This is the only actual line of code, really. Yeah. <laughs> and then returns zero, I guess. Yeah. What's nice, too, is that now we've taken our directional stuff and everything, and we've put all that complexity here, you know, so that within our actual LSM, like, it's pretty easy just to iterate. We don't, if we want to go left, we want to go yeah. right, we don't. Bother, we don't worry about it. Just let the iterator oh, handle yeah. all of that. That's yeah. no, not public. Iterator is public. Yeah. Iterator is public. Count, I feel like, should be grouped up with other little functions. That's yeah. the only thing I really want to move around. Yeah. The other ones all seem to be fine from an organizational standpoint, to be honest. Um, we can maybe move cursor for absolute index with the other, or with the stuff that's helping. Yeah. Um, 
because this one's not really used by this stuff. It's actually used by insert and remove. Yeah. Um, cool. But that's the only other thing. Well, it's also like the mirror image of this, though. Okay. So Maybe that's it is fine useful then. to have better to have it here. Yeah. Perfect. I think it's actually. Uh, I think our ordering is actually pretty logical already. Um, I think yeah. we shouldn't. Like artificially grouping the public functions at the top isn't really help anything, no. because it's better. It's more important how like the code is read inside this file, and eventually Zig will also have like automatic documentation generation, and so it'll just like pick yeah. out the pub functions and put those in a nice um, like API reference for users. Yeah. Cool. And I'm also, it's actually been I'm, started. I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with the order, and I also just wanted to kind of check if there were any pub functions we hadn't audited. That we, you know, maybe had. Yeah, this, yeah, like, I agree. Small, I think we've audited small everything helpers. now, though. Yeah. Yeah. Unit and dunit yeah. look good. We didn't really, I don't know if we checked these at all. Um, yeah. I think they do look good, though. Nodes, counts, indexes, nodes, counts, indexes. You know, we could set these to undefined instead of zero, actually. Yeah. That's where that would match the style we use in. Um, Actually, they yeah. already will be undefined. We don't even need to set them to anything. They're undefined already. Um, then you come back from the allocator. They will be undefined. Well, uh, in that the safe mode, mode, when you allocate, will it actually write to the memory in safe mode? Just allocate. Yeah, yeah, it will. We will. You can probably okay. see it doing that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's the free. Hold on. That's I wasn't Alec. Alec should do the same thing though. Um, yeah. Uh, Alec advanced. Here it is. Yeah. And there's also okay. an issue here. I wonder what that's about. Yeah. Should we check it out? Yeah. Yeah, so it's just to do it in the allocator implementations instead of in the interface. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess to make things more optimal somehow. Hmm. That's weird. I what said like a graphical there? glitch in Firefox. Sorry? Uh, uh, cool. I just wanted to check what Andrew writes. Um, yeah, where performance might matter. Okay, cool. Yeah, it can affect startup time for us. Like if we if we want to allocate our page cache, you know, our our yeah, and we can also cache. like yeah, we can pretty easily like yeah. I feel like this is this won't make a a whole lot of difference. Um, we can also turn off debug safety for like these functions if we want to. Um, I feel like this yeah. is, this will be like more of a micro optimization for us. It won't affect like once you, once it's the start the startups over, and then it won't affect us anymore. You never use the allocator yeah. index at the runtime. But I think you're right. The startup time could be seriously affected if we really are allocating a couple gigabytes of memory and setting it all to undefined. Yeah. Um, it's it's nice for you know we've got our open issue to handle over commit or virtual memory. Um, yeah, it does. Do that. The yeah. the thing is our page cache or buffer cache is going to be like 64 gigs. So that's going to take six gigs a second to write undefined. And that will then be six gigs a second, so 64. So we're looking at like eight seconds of startup time, uh, which hmm, is quite a lot. That's not really good. But then, then what we could do to solve the overcommit issue with virtual memory is we don't have to write to the whole page. We just have to, you need to write one thing per page. Just to the beginning yeah. of the page and then already skip, which will be much faster. Yeah. Yeah. So we will basically we just need to page fault um, guessing the kernel page size. Every exactly, every yeah. four thousand ninety six bytes we we just fault, yep. fault, fault. It'll, it'll also make our benchmarks nice because we won't be 
benchmarking the kernel's page fault machinery. We'll actually be doing real benchmarks, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. cool. And so are you cool with leaving those other, those things undefined though? I think there's no real reason to set them to zero. Um, no. It's more more for the big things, us. like where where we, we yeah we only have to do this this kind of thing for the very big memory allocations, but this is going to be pretty small, so it, yeah, like it'll help us catch well, bugs, like you said. And yeah. yeah, for those ones, we can also just very simply implement our own allocator. Um, yeah. Just use page allocator directly, for example, and just get pages from that, or just use mmap to allocate stuff. Um, yeah, like nice. Allocating in that way is very actually really simple. Um, yeah. The hard part of allocation is like keeping track of frees of, of how yeah. of what the member how do you free the memory? Like it's all bookkeeping yeah. really. If we don't have any bookkeeping, then it's trivial. Um, yeah. So we can just mmap yeah. 64 gigabytes and the video out of how we want and not do any bookkeeping. Um, yeah, that'll be nice. It'll actually also be good to do it that way because then we can control. We can sometimes we can control whether we want the memory to swap or not. So we can turn off swapping, uh, which will help. Because some, Indeed, some yeah. systems, people will forget to disable swapping and then get some interesting effects. Yeah, yeah. cool. All right. So now we've got init done, the init. I guess we've got everything we've done here now, we think at least. I mean, yeah. like, Add all this stuff real quick. Yeah. There we go. Now it's all indexed by Git, and it won't get lost. Yeah. So Isaac, what's your bet? Like, are we gonna? Is our first test gonna be find nothing? Are we gonna be correct? Um, right now I feel like it's gonna find nothing, but I know we probably will catch like some assertion failure or typo um, that we've made. Yeah, um, we'll see. I think we won't find yeah. very much, if anything. Yeah, cool. I think maybe we'll get a compile error or something, and then when we run the test, oh it's yeah, pass. I won't be surprised about uh, that. Yeah. I won't be too surprised about a compile error too. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm I'm betting that we'll pass the first test uh, first time. Cool. Uh, it, when when you're out in South Africa, I'll buy a burger for you also because we're getting we're gonna go for a burger just now. So uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, if if I lose, I don't know. Well, what do you think? Are you are you also <laughs> you lose. betting? Otherwise, I owe you. Why? Well, I, I mean, I yeah. I don't want to bet against us. We're pretty good at this. <laughs> yeah. So you you also you also betting that we're gonna pass the first test? I think we'll pass the first test. Um, okay. Yeah. So then, then what we'll have so we to do is maybe by... we'll we'll buy Jason the burger or someone else, you know, if we lose. <laughs> and yeah, cool. Sounds good. All right, testing expect equal context reference and flink iterate account. Well, then we iterate starting at zero zero and going in ascending order. We've already we looked at this code already. I just want to like. Please just scan over it again, since we usually like change stuff a little bit. Can this just be on one line? Yeah. Uh, I believe the wrong column. <laughs> I know it can't be. It's much longer yeah. than it looked before. I guess that's fine like that. All right. Reference to items at length. We got a reverse while well loop and do the same pattern as above. This all looks good. So I guess we're now we've got insert also implemented already. Yeah, I think we should get the the test running uh, once we've checked at the other stuff. But once we've got it running, we should come back to verify, and we should we should mess with our iterators here and say we want to verify ascending, but with this start node or with this relative index. So. Yeah, we, we, we're, not, we're not testing the start node at all yet. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So we've got insert also pretty much done, it looks like. So now I guess the next thing to do is implement remove. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, the other thing that verify can do is it can introspect a little bit and it'll, it'll know the node count. 
it can then assert that all subsequent nodes are null. And it can do the same, okay, for elements it can't because those are undefined. Uh, but yeah, Verify could do that. What do you think? Sure, we can do that. Yeah. Um, but just testing, we've got no dangling pointers. So for um, context.array.nodes, um, context. Node count. Node count. Um, node. Um, this is going to be as. Node capacity T uh, null. Oops, that's the wrong order. Node. Cool. That should do it. Yeah. It's near an hour. Oh, look at that. I did it up here as well somehow. Fun. Um, how's remove going to work? So we probably need to first, probably want to do the we same can, thing where we like determine a count yeah. first. We can, oh, I need to get the next highlight for minimum. I haven't done that yet. Yeah. I'll do that at some point. Cool. I forgot to update my highlighting for these ones. Yeah, they're very cool, these built-ins. We could, I was thinking we could just copy insert and then fix it up for remove, because it's pretty similar. Okay. This count stuff, though, is this, I guess if we really want to check if, if the array is empty instead. Yeah. Um, I'll delete that maybe, or let's, Move this up top for start with. So if um, array count equals zero. Yeah. Well, is it array dot count or reference to items at length? We want to check. Uh, right, yeah, we want to use our reference. Yeah. I think that's what we want to do. All right, yeah. and then do we need a buffer here? I don't think we do. We're, just, we're removing, we don't need a buffer to remove stuff. Um, no. We remove, we choose a random start index and a random length, but we don't like remove random data. Yeah. So that's yeah. good. Count free, I think we also don't need then. Um, so count max is the, well, yeah, so it's not actually, this is just count really. Yeah. Or the number of elements in the array currently. Um, yeah, so context.reference.items.length. So max, so yeah, we just need, I feel like we should just rewrite this. Okay, I'm gonna read, write a new version where um, we want to have like the maximum number to remove. Um, so I'm gonna call it count max as well. Yeah. Equals uh, the maximum is would be context of reference dot m dot length. Actually, no, we can't remove it's, more than a node size. Node. I think we just node yeah. capacity. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so it's just. That's it. That's the rate of node capacity. It, does, it is kind of similar to what we had up above. Okay. And the count is going to be this. And then we don't need this random bytes though. No. Um, so we can get delete this stuff now, and current free can also go. Yeah. Okay. Now we how's need to choose our, line, our index. Line length on line three. Uh, how's our line length over there? Good. Cool. Ninety-three. Um, Oh, I wonder if we've got a bug where we assume that element count max is greater than node capacity. Hmm. 
Can we just like assert that somewhere? Um, maybe, you're right. We probably do have a bug there. Um, we can just also like make that part of the API though. Um, yeah. You have to fill up at least one node. Yeah. Does this make sense to make part of the API? Like, I think so, because it might catch us out. Yeah. You know, if if someone sizes the pool to be two meg nodes and you're only storing so many tables, then it, it, they're using the thing wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I think this just this just kind of shows that you're using the wrong data structure if this you fail as a cert. Um, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, if you were do, if you, otherwise you should just use a simple array. Um, that's exactly. really what it is. You should just use an array list. Um, yeah. Sh shall we yeah, add a comment? In a comment? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if this is where it fails, you should be using an, an array. Maybe, maybe you, uh, a, a plain array. Yeah. Maybe we should say we we should be using, yeah, yeah, non-segmented array instead, and say we we should be using a non-segmented array instead, and then we can put a, a exclamation mark at the end if we say we. <laughs> yeah. Uh, non-segmented. Cool, I like that. Good catch. Um, so here we do the search, and then we say index is going to be. There's some random index. Um, oh, that's and less that, than... that assert actually can be fixed to be less than or equal to count max. Oh, yes. I'm also thinking that this is this next line is also like it's wrong. Because this is what if we then insert. I feel like we need we need to subtract um, count from this, right? Otherwise, mm -hmm. we could end up like having index be the last item or the last valid item in the array. Then we want to insert five items starting at that index, which wouldn't make any sense. I think we need to just subtract count here. No, actually, I think that's correct. Because if we subtract count, then we will never be appending to the array. We'll always be in the middle of it. Oh, uh, this, oh yeah, you're right. This, okay. Yeah. yeah. I remember. I remember. Yeah. Cool. This is not. This yeah. is not the maximum capacity of the array. This is the current yeah. length of the array. Yeah. Cool. And we've checked it against the maximum capacity already. Yeah. Or no, we've missed. Oh, this. Oh, yeah. Here it's different. Okay, yep. I'm happy now. Sorry. Um, but for removal, it's different actually, because we don't want to move. For insertion, this is correct. For removal, it isn't correct, though. I'm pretty sure. It, it, it um, isn't. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't remove items that don't exist, so we do need to subtract count here. Yeah. That's right. Do we know that count is going to be at least this? Um, no. Hmm. We don't have like a. Do we have a lower bound on count? Or an upper bound on count? So we don't want. I want, just want to make sure this doesn't over underflow. So the maximum value for count is going to be either this value or node capacity, whichever one's smaller. Yeah. So that does that is zero in the this is gonna be this can be larger than node capacity. Okay, but this ends up being smaller than node capacity and we'll take this one. Node capacity is smaller than we'll take that one. Okay, so this is this is all safe. The only only cool. area where it where it isn't safe is our random number generator might choose zero as a count. And then we're going to have the length minus zero turn that into an index, which will then be an overflow. 
um, we okay. Yeah, well, if count if count is zero coming out of the random, it has to be at least function. one. Okay. So we should say count max minus one and then plus one on the other side. Yeah. Yep. And for for inserting, we might have the same thing, where we try to insert nothing. We probably do. Yeah. Yeah. You can't insert nothing. Hmm. Cool. I think if there's going to be a bug, it's going to be in our fuzz test code. Yeah. And <laughs> like that, your fuzz test pass right away, but I think we'll find the bug here instead of in our actual code. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if, if that doesn't count for buggers, you know, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. For sure. This needs, of course, needs to be remove elements instead of insert elements. Yeah. And it needs to take a count instead of a buffer thing. Yeah. And now we need to okay. remove slice. Do we even have a function like that for? Um, uh, I we probably don't. Array. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. In realist, do we have a remove slice function? Or if it's remove starting account, there's a lot of functions in here I've never used, but yeah. um, I don't see a remove slice one. Move to unmanage, insert slice, replace range. What does this do? Okay. This works. We can replace range with a zero length slice to remove a slice. Because we here we have the start and this is start and count of our stuff, and then we just put yeah. in a zero length slice for new items. Okay. Cool. Cool. I knew it had to be there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering if we'll find a bug maybe in the array list. I don't think so. But... I don't think so. Um, but you never know. <laughs> it mm. probably isn't the most used function. I mean, if we go to the you know, that's not the right size font. I'm going to see if this is used in the standard library much. No, not okay. really. We do have tests for it, though, it looks like. Yeah. Um, it's also used, well, that's also, yeah, it's never used in the standard library or compiler. So yeah. who knows? <laughs> Worst case, we write our own. Um, yeah. Or fix that one, actually, and add better tests. It, but yeah. it's tested, so it, it should probably be. If, and if here, Andrew wrote it, uh, like it's probably solid. Like the tests are really um, good in this. We can see who we can see who wrote it. Um, so we know who to blame. Like anyone is in Zig who wrote it, they would have done a great job. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure the people. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, it's nice. Looks like um, Snekatron, Robin touched it last. He's, he's definitely capable. Mm. And Vexu as well. Vexu, yeah. It looks like someone did a lot of, or like changed a lot of lines here. I wonder what this commit was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, it seems like it was just a, lots of lines changed. Mm. Add blocks in the tests. Yeah, digging through the blame it gets kind of messy sometimes when people do like lots of reformatting commits. Um, changing indentation. There's ways to get around that. With if I've got like this, we don't need to go do this right now though. Sorry. <laughs> Let's just finish our thing. No, um, that's cool. This can fail, but actually it can't fail though because we're just reducing the size. Mm. Um, there, sh there should really be curlies the, there, open, open, close curlies. For oh like yeah, first. I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just looks weird. It doesn't, it wouldn't even save like line length. And it's missing a semicolon on mem.copy. Well, it doesn't need a semicolon though, because there's no curlies. Yeah, yeah. It's weird though. Mm. Yeah, let's test it. Uh, it'll be interesting. All right. This count length zero Index slice. count and then a zero length slice of t. Um, 
Yeah, that's it. And there's no... Well, we can also use an extreme capacity version of replace range, it seems. Um, Should we... Or like a version that... that... Uh, sorry, I'm a Tiazi. Well, we could also use a version that just doesn't accept a slice, it just is delete range, and then it just yeah. does this part with the catch and reachable internally. Yeah. So replace range also can't allocate if it's reducing the, the size of their list, yeah. which ours yeah. is. Which is um, what idea. do you want to say, though? Uh, yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. I was wondering if we can do um, that zero slice, instead of using inferred length, just put the zero there to say that that's what we... It's the same thing, yeah. What do you mean? Um, we're using the inferred length for the oh, zero length. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, just say a zero. Cool. That's removed done, I think. Yeah. So now we need to like write our run function, I guess, that just inserts and removes and does Verifies. I guess we can kind of use the same thing with the this same pattern with require and release, if you like, and just do yeah. Just replace these with insert and remove. Um, yeah. Do we want then a release all function? Or remove uh, yeah. all. Remove all. Hmm. We can put that up here. This is just like while um, this remove. Yeah. Hey, why did I copy that? Here we go. Wow, this um, context dot remove. And then um, what, while it's greater than yeah. zero. Yeah. And we should check what there we, we had in our in our other one, um, our what we verified after removing everything, after releasing everything. Release all. Yes. We did. Okay. Yeah. Cool, we um, could borrow those. And we can also um, do, we can check that all the nodes are null. Yes, we can. Um, we, it's kind of redundant with this, with this check actually, because we're going to call verify here as well. Um, okay. Yeah. We can just add one more assert before we call verify. I think that's what we want to do. We just want to do um, assert that the count is null. Or, right. Zero. Um, context that. Um, array dot count. Cool. And then we call verify. Yeah. And then I thought uh, we could also go into verify and add another check uh, that if the if the count is zero, then test that the node count is also zero, so that there's no empty node lying around. Sure. Yeah. Um, should we put this at the end then? Um... Yeah. Zero on, here we go. Error try test and expect equal zero contact array and count.
Okay, yeah, I think run is pretty much good to go then. Yeah. Should we run it? Oh uh, yeah. Do we do Seems we like check it's... out in do we check out insert and remove count? We need to still do that. Oh, we don't have that. We don't track that yet. No. Let's um. Well, inserts. We need to now like. Yeah, we can do that. Mm. At the end of insert, we're going to say um, context insert inserts plus equals count and remove that removes plus equals count and then in in uh, remove or after remove all then we can say um, try testing dot expect um, context at insert well it's just it's more like expect yeah Expect yeah. to expect e yeah, this is what I wanted to do. Yeah, context that inserts greater than zero, and then also that they're equal. Yeah. And then, where do do we already increment them as we do our inserts and removes? I just did that. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry, I missed that. Oh, uh, I think we need we need to move that before we verify. Otherwise, we might remove and then the count is zero and then we, yeah. I think that doesn't matter. Well, verify doesn't do anything though. Okay. But uh, I'm it's fine only, with that. It's fine. only remove all when we check. Yeah. Right at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think we should move remove all right to the end below remove. So it's the like um, we, we did sure. it that order in the other one. Cool. Is it the moment of um, truth? Yeah, time to actually like write the test. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we need to do something like this. Um, just copy this as well. Yeah. Um, segmented array. I'll be just. See, of course, it's forty-two. So. Yeah. Or or just two. They, sorry, they're getting ready for burgers, so it will be nice if we can run it first. All right. So, Let's move yeah. on. Finish this up quick then. All right, yeah. um, I'm going to get delete this then, I think, and just use the PRNG and comment. So we're going to do const. Are we need to create our test context. context. It's going to be similar to this, but not quite. Yeah. Uh, what parameters do we take here? We take um, uh, T, time. node size, element count max. Max. Um, so. Node size can just be like 16. Element count max, we can make that like 64 perhaps. 64. And then yeah. T can just be like a U32 for now. All right. I should delete this stuff. We can come back to it. Um, well, actually, no, we need to do this stuff we need as well. And this stuff can just go for now. And. I was probably not going to compile. You're going to have to come. I'll have to do this after lunch, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. Search LSM segmented array. Uh, and you should test. Sig, sig test. Test. Oh, look at that. We got some shadowing going on. Um, uh, OK. Yeah. So we've got some stuff to fix. Um, should we just come back after lunch and fix this up, this stuff up and run it? Yeah, and let's do that. Then? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do that. All right. So, Cool. So, um, should we make it like a, um, maybe like a, uh, pretend we've got, yeah, maybe should we go to the hour? So a little bit more than sure. 45. Okay. Yeah. If you, if you, sounds good to me. Okay. Right, so we, you we're just doing a, a over, yeah, cool. We're just doing a quick walk out and back. So I should be, I should be back. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. No stress. Awesome. Uh, yeah, great. Yeah, awesome, Isaac. Enjoy lunch. That's fun.
Thanks.
There we go, we're back on. Got the speed share going. Awesome. All right, shall we work through these compilers? Yeah, good. Cool. So, maybe I should just do this. Set global make command say test search slash What's it called? Um, uh, LSM segmented array. LSM segmented array. Yeah. Oh, it's right there. I oh. have to it. <laughs> yeah, it. Can then you? we can jump to the compilers from here. <clears throat> Getting a little bit of feedback, to, just a tiny bit. Yep, I think I just fixed that, hopefully. Mm. Cool, no, it's, it's good. Cool. So we have unclear identifier <coughs> div seal here. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense. We, should, we, do we already start that our extensions thing? Shall we start we that? Make that now. Yeah, let's do that. So actually, div, DJ is gonna add like a better one. Or did he already add that? Do we have a, how many div seals do we have now? We've got a few. <laughs> We've got utils, div seal, nice. Okay, oh. let's use this one. I yeah. guess we're gonna rename this to this extension because it's called utils right now. Mm. Let's use this one now. Um, I'm just gonna read it real quick. Um, this is our comp time block. This just does some asserts to make sure that unsigned it only supports unsigned things I think that that's that's good though yeah, yeah let's just use that one yeah. um, so shall we move it array <coughs> shall we rename it to extensions has DJ already done that or should we do that now he hasn't done it yet um, okay I think that should be a separate commit though um, okay let's finish this one first then we can do the rename in a separate commit do can we get rid of this plus one we should probably come back to that um oh actually yeah, hold up local shadows declaration of element there yes we've got a function called element now and so yeah. we should probably find <coughs> better names for this we can call um, that just e that what we capture there is e yeah i guess we have elements in full here so it's clear that that E refers to an element. Uh, same thing here, an insert element. Should uh, we just call it E? May maybe then we want our API to just be get element instead. Um, yeah, perhaps. This one, um, we also just call it like at. Okay. So it takes an, um, Yeah. That's good. Cool. Yeah, add cursor. <clears throat> That's nice. So, like, yeah. you, would you prefer? Uh, I think if we do do at, it's nice to have it short because then in the call site, it's very nice. Yeah. It's basically just a way that, um, that we do indexing into the array. So a little short thing like that. Yeah, is, is but nice. I, I would I would suspect that the at function would take an absolute index instead of a cursor, mm. and then at cursor would be like the cursor variant of that. But we don't actually have a function taking an absolute index right now. Yeah. So maybe it's fine to just leave it at that as this. Well, okay, then then we should do at cursor, so we leave it free. Uh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then I can also. Or it, then, then we can also call it like um, element for cursor to keep with. 
your element at cursor. Yeah. It's good, I think. Okay. Oh, man. That's it. Cool. Um, make redeclaration of function parameter elements. Oh, I've messed that up. Just element. Local shadows declaration of count. Oh, yeah. We've got a count function. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> We could then rename it to Len. Like L here? Uh, or in the, as the, fun the function? The, the function. Uh, sure, that works. <clears throat> I think that's, that's nice. Yeah. And then count. Yeah, we're just calling it mostly in our test code. Yeah. Yeah, we use a lot. Uh, it's not just um, from this. It could be in level manifest, maybe, I guess. Yeah. Um, looks like it isn't here. So I guess we're good then. Uncode identifier array. Um, Context.array.length. And use local constant. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I like when the compiler's just right and we never use this. We should probably log the adjusted stuff then, I guess, or the, and probably, in, where do we do that? Oh, here it is, um, node pool. Yeah, copy that print statement. Yeah, this, flog, it's now, um, inserts, Capacity invalid identifier. Oh yeah, we need, it needs to be test array dot new capacity. I indeed. Um, this just doesn't make any sense. Context I init. What's this even take? Just a random. Yeah, that's what I thought. Get rid of that I. Oh yeah, look at this. We got. Whoa. How did we get to here though? Why are we in block storage? We must have referenced like the LSM stuff from here. Yeah. What do we import LSM tree for? Just for the direction enum. Okay. Um, yeah, so the problem is that we're starting now with the AST generation code on all the um, LSM tree stuff, and so. Yeah. We need to go to fix all that stuff right now. I think the, the easiest way to just get this compiling is just to copy the direction enum here. Yeah, I was thinking that for too. For now. Yeah, um, let's do that. Oh, I guess. Const. We'll need to do that stuff at some point, but it's not done yet, so. Um, yeah. Make. Okay, type type does not support field access. Oh, I guess you can't do that. Um, you can use type info to get this. I bet there's something in SD that meta that can give us that. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can also just use type info yourself, but is there like a lane function? Sentinel, no. Not fields. Um, look for pub functions, declaring them tag. Maybe not. Um, I 
So this would be a pointer to erase what we have, and then we would need to go like child dot length. Okay. I think <clears throat> we should just do that, I guess. Yeah. Um, type info dot pointer, oops. Pointer dot child dot length. That's not too bad. Yeah. I think or well, child will give you an array type. Well, let me make sure this is this is still good. And then DFT length, perfect. Yep. Oh, nice. Oh, we need to go type info child actually. Oh uh, yeah. That's a little messy. And then call dot array no. dot array dot lin. Oh. Or yes. Oh. Cool. That'll work. It's a little bit verbose, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> Node people could also expose that just directly instead of like making every caller do this. Yeah. Um, node pool. Node. You just expose node sizes of constant. Um, but then we had the problem here that we'd have to like duplicate and we have to like shadow stuff. Um, we can <clears throat> um, we can just prefix it then up top. Like, like yeah, just do it. like here underscore yeah, and then here just do pub const node size equals node size let's let's do the le here. leading underscore i think that's better <clears throat> oh yeah we actually did the other way last time oh, we yeah. started with leading <coughs> when we went last time yeah when we did it uh when we did this the trailing one then i realized it comes up hard against the colon and semicolon so it's actually nicer i think like that i think leading is also more common yeah, I've seen people do this before. I think I've done this in my own code too. Yeah, just to get around anno little annoyances like this. Yeah, um, Pro proty as well, and it's also like the leading underscore is kind of saying, well, we're wanting to ignore the shadowing. Like if you're silencing something unused, also, you just use the. I don't know. <laughs> I think it makes sense to pull the asserts down <laughs> like this. Yeah, um, I guess we might. I'm going to put this up here, because I think it just makes sense to do next to each other. Yeah. Even though the asserts don't depend on it. But the order is also just like not relevant here. You put the asserts also like on the bottom for what it wouldn't matter. Yeah. Thing is, it reads nicely like this. Um, so yeah, let's just use that and not do this type info introspection. Yeah. Yeah. Not that it doesn't work, it's just kind of ugly. Yeah. <laughs> um, <coughs> node size equals just node pool that node. Well, do we even use this out how often? No. We don't even use, it, use this that often, we just use it in this one place. Yeah. To compute capacity. Anyhow, that should get us past that compiler. And I can close this. Import a file outside package path. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Set. Like past mean dot. Now I can get around that stuff. Unused local constant. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Good>. amazing. <coughs> we both didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, the compiler is just better at this stuff than we are, you know? Yeah. Um, should we use the A or just delete it? Because this one doesn't read too badly. Yeah. Maybe I'll just delete these two things. Delete it, yeah. It's much nicer to actually see it and see, okay, this is the numerator. Yeah. All right. Here we go. We got our first actual compile error. And it looks like just coercion failing. Um, found expected a pointer to array of 33. Um, no. Yeah, because this isn't returning a pointer to it, it's returning a slice. I see. So we have to do this annoying thing where you like slice this to from zero. Yeah. Node 
No, Max. That's too mildly co annoying, but it's okay. To coerce it. You can also like, do it here. Um, yeah. Doesn't really matter. If it if it fits up Actually, top, it's probably better to do it here. Yeah. Yeah, but then it's, it's 101 kilons, which is why I was hesitant. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just put a trailing comma, close our eyes, and run zig format. <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. That's not too bad. Yeah. Um, we can also just make a new variable though. Um, if we call this um, const nodes equals nodes slice. Um, do that and we call this one node slice. Yeah. And then just the trailing comma and then just remove. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, then Do then like I th that. just the air to first still. Yeah. The okay, nodes. And then down we're gonna set against nodes. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Does it matter, Isaac, uh, if we call free on the node slice versus on the array? No, it doesn't matter at all. No. Um, the same memory. You know, I like the other style where we just wrap it. Uh, okay, sure. Because sure. ma maybe that's also... That's, that's it's something that we can maybe fix in the standard lib. Would that be possible? Um, It's tricky. Because the problem is that... Um, so turn type is always a slice, even if n is comp time known. And so, okay, so here's how you get around this, actually. We can add we, an ex extension. We just need to use create instead. Um, well, that's the wrong thing. Yeah. Um, okay, this is what it is. Well, we're creating an array of pointers. Um, Maybe the same for these other ones. I think it might be. Yeah. So yeah. So let's, let's just do it like this. Um, node count max, and then we don't have any of this. This is actually fine because we don't need any alignment requirements here. Last time we had to this issue, we had like a, we had needed an aligned alloc with create. Yeah. Um, um, I was just gonna. Here. I remember that. I was gonna add it. To say that as well. Cool. Um, this now just creates that type. Yeah. Cool. And then we, we'll need to fix these ones. Also, won't compile though. I think. Um, yeah. See, same thing with counts. Yeah. So just same. Create. Node count max. This is also safer to do this way. Um, okay. <clears throat> it means we destroy. You, you mean Even though it actually would work fine if it was free, it just is a better style to match, create, and destroy. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you mean safer to use destroy or safer to do it um, with this like compound? They're actually type? identical, really. Yeah. Um, like this will free the pointer. Um, like it'll kind of turn the, the po type being pointed to into bytes and pass that to raw free. And this one. Passes it more directly to raw free, but it's the same bytes really. Yeah. Um, and because we have a pointer to array as our thing, it will coerce to the slice free expects in the argument. So both will compile and work perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, but destroy is just better style to match the create. Nice. Um, that should do that now. Deprecate it, call ensure unused capacity. That's right. Um, here we are, ensure. Uh, unused, or actually total capacity. This is the thing we're starting off here. Uh, no member called node count in test context in deepme.array.node count. Oh, well, hold up. This is like old code from the node pool. We should think about what we want to do here. Yeah. Um, okay. This is the number of iterations in our um, in our loop. 
so we could you could use like max elements times two or something yeah yeah i think that's good Fix that. Oh, I didn't write the file to disk. Okay. Expected U32 found U size. Oh yeah. Okay. So let's make some one of these things like a U size. So we can just like incat this to a yep. U32. It'll work. I think it's the best place to do that. Fix. What? That still didn't work. Okay. Count for you. Does element count, count max a U size? That's a U32. So why are we getting a U size then? Hmm. Is it maybe node capacity? This must be a U size then. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's node size. Can we just make U node size a U32 as well? In node pool? Yeah, I think so. If the single item pointer passed through, hold up. Where are we at? In the insert? Bytes. Yeah, okay. Bytes. First, this should be sliced as bytes. U32 found U size. Uh, same thing here, we need to think cast. To be honest, this. Yeah. It, it might be cool to have a. We could use truncate here, to be honest, but it, it's kind of fine like this. Yeah. It's too long now, though, which is annoying. Yeah. Um, we could. We don't. Um, we can cache it up top, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm planning on, but I didn't have a good name for it. Uh, so reference, reference count. Well, it's not, I mean, count is like overloaded too much here, I feel like. We could also, hmm, um, current length. How's that? Well, yeah, then, then I'd say just reference length so that you can see that it's Okay. The, the reference. Yeah, I was also thinking reference lint. <coughs> All right. thing essentially um if we have a reference length here too i think we only use it once actually yeah we use it again at the bottom yeah maybe here we don't want to cache well yeah actually it, it's fine the other two cases actually will compile just fine yeah um they're safe then it's coercing the u32 up to a u size in the other two cases here yeah. Um, got the same thing here, so just bash it probably here. Um, here we can then use reference length, I guess. Yo, member named insert in array, insert element, right? Yeah. Yeah. Neither of you typos. 
Focus in U32 found U size. Oh, Her eyes at U size. Eye. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you remember a name from Node? In. Oh, it's nice. It's nodes, not node. Yeah. New member named Get Node. It's a choir. Is it choir. Yeah. In JavaScript, all of this would have been fine. The program would just run. And then you have just crashes at runtime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would release it, and then it will just. That's how they It'll just crash in the browser. You know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Stack typing is pretty good. Mm. Stack did pointer to four U thirty twos. Found a pointer to sixteen. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We need to do a, a cast here. That's right. Um, yeah. This is just this should just be a pointer cast, really. Yeah. Um. There's no reason to have more safety here. We've got asserts that it's that it fits and whatnot. We've, so this is just a pointer cast to a uh, const new capacity, uh, new capacity of t. We're gonna need this again for the other acquire call. Yeah. <clears throat> Isaac, do we have an, an assert that? <clears throat> um, that the size of the node is equal to the size of the type times capacity. Well, the, our node capacity is derived from <coughs> the From that. Things. Okay, cool. <coughs> so, Perfect. I was thinking that'd be fine. Yeah. Perfect. Expected type LSM node pool and U32 array that remove empty node at. Oh, we have to pass the node pool to it first. Indeed, yep. Got him passed in here, I assume. Yep. Type is the same thing with release. We need to point request it back to a, um, a node. Not assigned a constant. What's going on here? Oh, we made it constant here, didn't we? Yeah. We do that. I think we thought that we're not gonna. Here, I assume. Yeah. <clears throat> I, d I think we just missed that then. <clears throat> right. It. Okay. We're making. Oh, look at that. So, like, let's say we we ran the test and we hit an assertion failure. Cool. So I guess it didn't just pass right away. Okay. <laughs> now we gotta figure out where the solution failure comes from. I'll yeah. run this in my terminal so we can read it better. Yeah. Um, main package path dot. So. Line five three four. Actually, it's kind of nice to read, run here actually, yeah. Because then I can like jump to it. I yeah. think. Yeah. Well, that's the assertion failure here. Yeah. Here's the one that failed. Um, absolute index being less than. Looks like we're trying to start iteration past the end. Hmm. I wonder if we just have an off by one in our tests when we do this verify backwards. Is that where it comes from? Um, uh, yeah, it comes from verify <coughs> when we create the iterator to go backwards. It comes from right here. Yeah. On 9742. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We just have an off by one here. Oh, uh, cool. All right. Let's try it again. All right. It looks like it failed. So we've had one bug in the test code so far. Good. Um, what's going to be this time? Uh, 
So now we, we have... Um, oh, interesting. That's weird. We're filling this assertion. <laughs> Result being less than element count max in length. Yeah. Oh, anyway, I bet they're... Hmm. I've got no idea what that's feeling. Um. Yeah. Oh, um, that's uh, off by one. It should be less oh, than or equal to. Where? Um, there. Right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. Count. Fewer than equal to half. It's all going to be assertion failures, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Three, three, one, five. Then. Yeah. C count is greater than equal to half. I mean, if we move element. Hmm. That's in our. Three, one, five. Oh, interesting. How'd that happen? Mm, that's very interesting. Uh, that seems like it could actually be a bug. Yeah. Um, <coughs> In some other code that didn't merge properly. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. How do we want to debug this? This is like part way through the run when we do a remove. Yeah. We remove elements. I think what we could do is those branches we've got where we decide to merge, if we don't decide to do anything, we should add an else branch and assert. <coughs> and that, that might help us find the, yeah, just over oh, there. You mean like here? Yeah. So I think what and happened, like assert, uh, I think what happened was a previous remove failed to go into one of those. Okay, and so just like at the end of the function, we should just assert that um, uh, B is both B and C count are greater than or equal to half. Yeah. Well, we don't know if C is still valid. Here we could have removed C. So we should just assert that B count is greater than or equal to half at the end of the function. Okay. Assert. <coughs> we can do this for sure. Yeah. Let me see if that fails somehow. I feel like it won't though. Yeah, it's still the same assertion failure. Mm -hmm. um, Shall we see what C count is? What the value is? Yeah, let's can like maybe we should just like run this in GDB and like poke around a little bit. Yeah. Um, oops, that's the wrong font size. <coughs> A little bit more equal in terms of size. Um, test command is this. <coughs> um, so J Tiger B. Um, we could. Well, we don't. We're not going to step through anything. So we can just like print stuff for now. Um, yeah, so we want to go to... Hmm? Okay, a different... That's the... That's this. Stack here doesn't make sense to me. Why aren't we getting... Or we're just... Oh. I didn't pass the args to it. That's annoying. Okay. I need to, I see what the problem is. Um, the easiest way to do this is just to do gdp slash args. Is the test... The test binary is um, this. So right now we ran the test binary, but without this command line arc, the zig compiler, which the test runner needs. Yeah. Um, so <coughs> just doing dash dash arcs, we'll fix that. And now we can run it and get the same stack trace, I hope. Yep. Mm. And now we can do our backtrace. Um, let me make this. Uh, a little bit bigger so we don't have to, it doesn't wrap as much. Um, now we can go check out all the local variables we want. Mm. So 
I guess we'll go to frame seven. Seven, PC count one. Interesting. <laughs> it's way less than half. Oh, I know what it is. Um, yeah. We didn't, it's that's actually a bug in our code. Do you see what it is too? Yeah, yeah. It's the last node. It's the last node. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So we've had two bugs in our code so far. Uh, the one indeed well one of them was in the they're both in the assertion so far so i think if we get rid of this assertion it all works properly yeah um yeah these are just overzealous assertions not actual bugs yet yeah um i guess you can count it it depends on how you find a, define the bug but yeah they um, do they they do so count as like a liveness bug or crash crash bug they do yes yeah so c count equals um array dot node count minus one or c count is greater than that, equal to half let's try this now. Uh, uh, that that isn't correct because that is oh yeah um what we actually need there is so c count is the number of elements in the node but we're comparing it to oh <laughs> c equals array to node count minus one or yeah <laughs> there we go now we've got us down to the next thing, which was an integer underflow on extracting one from the link here in Verify 754. Um, I think integer we just added overflow. that. Underflow. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, underflow. Yeah. Four, go. That seemed like the right place. It's where we do minus one on it, uh, line 745. 745. Oh, I said 54. Yeah. Um, okay, so 45 is here. Um, yeah, the problem if, is, well, if yeah. there's nothing, then we want to use zero. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, that's kind of awkward, though. Maybe the iterator should allow us to start past the end. Uh, it takes in an absolute index, so I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it should. I think we should just do our branch here to say like, yeah, if well, if context dot reference of items at length equals zero, zero else that's really long now yeah um i guess we can just use a reference items constant again yeah and maybe we could cast here Or, you know what we could do? Um, use a max function. Better. Check this. Use no. a max function. Use saturating arithmetic. Uh, okay, yeah, excellent. Hey, high five. <laughs> that's, that's really cool. I haven't yeah. gotten used to this new tool we have yet, but it's, yeah. it's pretty nifty for stuff like this. Mm. Um, it's going to be this. Um, I was thinking you could do max items length or one and then minus could, one. That works too, yeah. But saturated arithmetic is even better. Yeah. Um, so it's minus um, is it this. Yeah, there we go. Looks a little bit funky, but oh no, it, that's not it. Oh, I know what's happening. My ZLS is is not aware of. My ZLS is still like a really old version from when yeah. ZLS used to work better, and uh, so yeah. it's not up to date for the 0.9.0. <laughs> so it's going to tell us is it. It might. It's just going to highlight this with red until yeah. I update ZLS, I guess. Um, I should probably do that today, though. <laughs> this should work, though, I think. Um, three hey, tests passed. Well, awesome, Isaac. Well done. Look at that. Yeah. We only had two bugs and assertions, it seems. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Let's make the. I want to see a log. How many inserts and deletes we do? Um. Two ninety four to two ninety four removes. Mm. Cool. Nice. So I guess the next step is to test more um, combinations of six of these two numbers and the, yeah. the type two, I guess. Yeah. If we can do like, I don't know if it helps like odd size typed, or. What's important to do is to test a type that doesn't fit in a node um, evenly. Yeah. Yeah. Just to make sure we like handle the, that padding properly. Yeah. Um, let's use the same kind of tuple strategy we use for node pool, though. I think. Yeah. Like kind of this this kind of thing. Just so we have a like, concrete test cases we can reason about. Yeah. Then we, this will just be like, uh, what we call it, um, element count max. max. Uh, and then we'll have, um, what, what are these things even? Um, nerd size, element count max. Mm. The nerd size can stay the same. Then we have, we need to put a Q32 and, we also need to fix the, the node pool test, perhaps, to use a U32 instead of a U size there. I yeah. think that won't compile it right now. Yeah. You want to do that real quick before we forget it? Yeah, let's do Did that. To just kind of change the yeah. big test, let's call it some node pool. It, it compiles all right. I guess we should still fix it, though. Yeah. So it's comp time now is the thing, and so it just kind of uses the value, I guess. Yeah. Uh, that would be more correct since we now have that for a node size. Okay. So now we've got element type, node size, element count max. So yeah, we can get rid of all these. This would be element count max. Count max. Type. Um be U32 to start with. Yeah. We have okay. 16, which I used, one we had before. Then we can talk about which text cases make the most sense. I'm just yeah. make sure this compiles, first of all. Uh, what have I gotten wrong here? Uh, there's a comma after the U32 that we need after element type. Uh, oh. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. I think node and size. This stuff now go no, here. Node size is in bytes. So we're going to overflow that. Oh, no, we're not. No, we're, we're fine. Sorry, it's the element count that goes in, okay. e element type that goes into node size. So that's OK. Uh, oh, man. You know what? This is a problem. I've also got like old zig format. Um, here, I can fix this, I think, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Set um, glo global format. Command um, slash local because old zig format o dot h dot o does not know about um, saturating arithmetic. Yeah. Hmm. That seems to have worked. I also, just do this. Oh, I need the dash dash std in. That's what it is. Mm. Okay. Um, there we go. Now it should work. Um, or not. So I can just do this every time I want to format. I just format less often <laughs> until yeah. I fix this stuff shortly. <laughs> cool. I do like this. This is this feels like quite clean. Yeah. Um, I like the syntax as well. Yeah, hardware. Okay. Um, yeah. Like if the hardware has instructions for this, then it'll be branchless. Mm -hmm. If LVM is able to compile that in a branchless way, it will be branchless. Yeah. That's kind of nice. Yeah, very nice.
Yeah, I need to start like seeing that more often because like it's a very nice way to solve that problem. That's a pretty common problem too. I feel like. Yeah. But. Yeah. Cool. So what what was good is that we had two liveness bugs, where we might maybe have had two correctness bugs, although although Indeed. they it they weren't they wouldn't have been correctness bugs. They it turned out to be not to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um, but our assertions were just a little bit overzealous, which is much better than not asserting something we could have asserted. Exactly. Because yeah. we did like not think of these cases. They that or well, one of them was just off by one. Yeah. Um, the other one was like we, we forgot about this case, but it turns out the code works fine, yeah. even in that case. Um, well, I think it was, I think it does. You want to go look at that again, actually, real we, quick? Yeah, we should. Um, where where it's the last element. Um, this is where. Yeah, so this means I think we'd actually remove an element potentially in this case. No, because we, we handle it properly, perfectly here already, actually. Because in this case, it's then, if C is almost empty, then it's very likely that we'll hit this branch, because B count plus C count will be less than or equal to node capacity. Because um, if C counts much less than node capacity and B count is now, like, yeah. yeah. But I think, I think we handle this perfectly on We still have a bug, actually, um, because what can happen is we we can go into the second branch because c c count might be 10 and we and b count might be just under half so we can't oh uh, no I think we might have an assertion failure on line 10 and 11. 11, you know. Here? I don't mm -hmm. think we do. If you look at those those two in combination with this, these are the two conditions to get those assertions. Yeah. Um, B count plus C count is less than or equal to node capacity. So the, so the edge case is once equal to node capacity. Yeah. And then B count is less than half. B count less than half then implies that C count is greater than or half. Yeah. Because the two of them together are less than um, or, or, or must be greater than equal to, greater than node capacity to hit this branch. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm I'm confident these are still right. Okay, good. I'm really happy that we wrote this code the way we did, because otherwise we would have had issues with this. Yeah, yeah. But this is just like the, the best way to express this. I feel like. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. We, what I think we should do is that assertion that tripped on line twelve. Um, Let's do the main assertion first and then the exception after, like, so C count greater than equal to half. You can't, you can't do it that way though. They'll fail then. Um, what, uh, can't we write? We don't run this part if the first part is true. So this is this. If this yeah. is, ends up being true, then we don't run this code. Um, yeah, that's but, why we can, it worked. Yeah. But it would work also if you said C count greater than equal to half or C is the last node. That's also fine. Oh, okay, yeah, because this is not actually going to crash. No, we just need one sure, of them yeah, to okay. be true. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. I was thinking about this differently somehow for some reason. Cause like, you can often do stuff like where the order does matter. Then, then it'll crash if you do it the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But here we don't. That's not the case. So we're fine to do it like that. Yeah. Yep. That's gonna get annoying. <laughs> um. Yeah. But yeah, this this all seems right to me still. We yeah. still this this code doesn't change at all. I don't think. Yeah. So we always just we do the same stuff no matter what C count is. And this yeah. thing also the assertions we had before still hold. So there's nothing we need to change about how it happens here. Yeah. It's yeah. much nicer without that outer if you know. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. It also wouldn't have been correct if we had that outer if. Yeah. Um, we wouldn't have hit this case as often as we should. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
yeah, and that wouldn't be correct if we're not merging as yeah, often. Yeah, because now if we remove from uh, node B, well, C is like mostly full. Um, or, or if we if we remove what, if B is like mostly full and has like only a few slots left, but C is like almost empty and is the last node. Now we can also compact those. Yeah. We've like added another case where we compact in. Yeah. Which is great. Yep. So the last node is allowed to be half full, but I mean we could also like check here though um, if we wanted to. It's not required for correctness, but it would be an optimization to here also check if we can compact at the previous node then or something like that. Yeah, that's um, what that's what I was thinking. Um, that's why I thought we can do B and C, which means we've got still a space for A, and we can exactly. we can compact with either side. Um, so we could probably make this a bit more generic and then handle that. Yeah. But I don't think we we don't have to do that for correctness. Let's let's first get some more test cases. I'm 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 thinking this is, I'm now happy this is right again. Yeah. Um. Even with we didn't actually have to change anything. We just made the just the assert. Yeah. So that's quite nice. Yeah, it just like t so basically we didn't have any bugs, just two over tight assertions. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess yeah, depends. There's still liveness bugs, I guess. Still, so, yeah, yeah. We still. I, owe I still feel pretty good about that. We we both <laughs> we both owe the others some burgers. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Yeah. All right. Let's see if this compiles still. Um, oh, that's the wrong one. Yeah, unused capture. Okay, yeah. I should use this, shouldn't I? Uh, People really the best word for this thing. It's like settings or something. Uh, a, a tuple is just um, it's it's some list of parameters of variable yeah. length. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know what a tuple is, but I feel like we should use a bit more descriptive thing than just tuple. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, we could say um, parameters. It's just then we're going to hit the line. Or we could call it options. Uh, yeah, because yeah, tu tuple, tuple is a bit generic, whereas options is, is a more specific form. Yeah, I like that more. Wrap that anyways. Yeah. Um, you can probably uh, let's pass the whole file through. There we go. Maybe we can just add right. a new a new line after we create the type, so that we can keep the init and deinit grouped. Yeah. Sure. That works great. Nice. So now yeah. we can just add it whatever other options we want. Yeah. Um, uh, shall we, just for fun, shall we set element count max to like a thousand? Just see how it works? Sure. Yeah. wonder how like, long that'll take to run in debug mode. Yeah. Still pretty fast. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So we've done something right then. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Because that really just does like random insertions and removals. Mm. It's still like less than a second. Yeah. Should we run it again quick just to see? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not a it's not a good benchmark because it's also in like built in debug mode, right? Um, uh, benchmarking yeah. this should be done differently, but it feels fast enough. Yeah. <laughs> what we should do is try some different element types and node sizes. Um, so. What type? We can make this like, I don't know. Make this a U128, it's still going to fit evenly. I think we should have some, like, some structs or something, but then our test won't actually work. So we just use trivial comparisons in the elements. 
Yeah. Instead of doing like meta to equal, we could we could change that. Um, like here we just say. Oh, actually, I think expect equal already does that. It already yeah. does like a. It's just a meta equal thing. So we can probably just use a spec here. Yeah. And it'll work fine. So let's use table info. Why not? Um, yeah. Oh, great. Then. Or something um, similar to table. Yeah. Because we can't actually include the tree, otherwise we'll get those compilers, right? Yeah. Um, but we can just copy the struct. Mm. For testing. Um, and then have a to-do to like use the proper one. Yeah. Um, use the, uh, or import this type. To Todd. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> I want to type zeros instead of those. Uh, import this type from lsm host tree dot zig. Um, yeah, and we can just toss it. Oh, we need to give some key type. Let's just use like uh, u32s or u64 yeah. for keys. Yeah, that's cool. We. Six. Yeah. Ah. Ah. We could use U128 just to check what happens with alignment and stuff. Then this is going to be... Okay, element type is now going to be table info. Yeah. Note also... size is still 16. We need to make this a lot bigger then. We need to make it like... 1024 or something. Yeah. Or like, Maybe. we're gonna have to fit a couple of table inputs at least. Yeah, do we have a restriction on node size that it's gotta be a power of two? I think we do. Yes, we do, yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's make it like 65536. And see. Um, six, five, five, three, six. Element count max, what should we put for this then? Like, let's do something big, like 32768. Six, eight. Just All see, right. what, see what happens. See what happens? All right. Uh, zig test. Size of table info. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to delete these things. We can put them actually out here. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, oh, our assertion failed. Um, <laughs> okay, we got padding in our struct, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah that's what it is. Um, stick this up there. Still. Okay, what, we, what have we gotten wrong here? Um, oh, that's interesting. Is it just because there's now, oh, of course. There's padding now. There's padding at the end. Yeah. And that's, that's annoying. That's because we've added the timestamp. You see, before it was you fine. Like the, the, yeah, before we only had two. We had another snapshot thing, yeah. We had two U64s so that got, it, got us back onto 16 byte alignment. Yeah. So, what do we do now? Do we just like add a U64 padding? <laughs> That feels wasteful. Yeah. Hmm. We'll probably find some use for it eventually. Yeah. Also, what's interesting is on disk, uh, on disk, we're going to record when it was deleted, right? Are we going to do that? Yeah, we must. Yeah. Otherwise, if we crash and start back up, we won't know what, what things are visible from the current snapshot. Yeah.
So if our if our keys are eight byte keys, what are what are the range of options that we're considering for keys, Isaac? I think we've got sixty four. We even have thirty two bit keys. I think we don't have any thirty two um, bit keys. We've either got sixty four bits yeah. or one twenty eight bits, I think. Yeah. And in both cases, we're going to have padding. Yeah. Well, let's look at the composite key real quick again. Composite key. Yeah, so it's either 64 or 128. Those are the only yeah. two options. Yeah. Um, OK. So I was actually thinking of this last night, I think. But maybe. Oh, it's actually even bigger, though, isn't it? Because it has a secondary and a timestamp. It's 128 plus 64. And also adds padding if necessary. Yeah. yeah. This is either going to be 128 or 256 bits then. Yeah. Always aligned to 16. Okay. Yeah. So I think what we should do is add flags to the table. Just add a flags thing and just say this is reserved for future use. Yeah, and I think that will come in handy because I'm thinking maybe to hit our March deadline, we might just use Bloom filters. And okay. if we want to change table layouts or things on the fly, you know, if we if we want to ever introduce uh, compression or change change filters oh, what do you think oh, do you also think the bloom filter is a good way to start um perhaps i'm not sure i guess they're, they're pretty simple to implement right yeah yeah um and it'll also have less it'll be less awkward the only thing i would worry about is like getting stuck with that long term because we haven't designed our system to be flexible enough to like use the fix the more fixed size um binary yeah. fuse filters yeah. Like tighter requirements on like what sizes are you allowed to use. Yeah. Um, I think. Okay. Well we we can get if if you're happy, like we can get the binary fuse in, in time in March. Uh, I think we have to just see how much we like I think we should just focus on the critical things first and see how much time we have left when it comes to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like not, we don't have to make this decision yet, I don't think. No, no. Um, but I, I have been thinking that maybe because we want to close the loop in in Feb, and then that gives us March to vaporize and test and fix bugs. And there'll also be like a long tail of things to do. Yeah. Uh, so I was thinking maybe we can reduce our scope and if that helps. Uh, yeah, it probably would. We'll see closer how we feel here. Yeah. But I think flags, flags are still useful because Going forward, we might might want to add compression, yeah, compression and things. Also, right? Yeah, I think this is this is actually a pretty good thing to have, to be honest. Well, yeah. I'm sure we'll find usage for that. Yeah. Um, so now it should actually compile. I hope. Um, still no. Oh, we need to update the size now. Yeah. It'll actually, be um, be 48, right? Yeah. And. Um, let's go to our LSM also and do the same there. Yeah, let's fix that. I yeah. just want to make sure this compiles first. So, I guess in node capacity mod 2 equals 0. What? Did I like just typo this? Oh, interesting. That's different. Okay, let's go fix that other thing first. Um, this is in. LSM tree, and then we'll get back to this stuff. Um, yeah. So flags. Well, the other thing we need to do is move these keys up to be right after the checksum because of alignment purposes. Yeah. Everything else is a U64, but these ones can be U128. Yeah. Um, I think. Well, packs pack structs are getting fixed, but um, it might take a, it might take a while um, yeah. before we can use them. We'll see. Yeah. Um, there are, there's like an accepted proposal to fix them now, so cool. that'll be good. Nice. Um, are we going to add yeah. flags right at the end, or what, what are you thinking? 
I think I'd do that, yeah. I yeah. want to kind of like put a comment about the agreement here, though. Um, yeah, good. These may be the line 16 or a line 8. So we must place them here to avoid padding. How's that? Yeah, uh, where we say we must place them, the them just has a trailing E that we can delete. Um, should we just set flags to zero for now? Um, yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, and it should be. And we can even use a pack struct for flags eventually. Um, exactly. I'm not, even sure, I'm not actually sure if pack structs will be, will be good for this use case long term. We'll have to see about that. It, it kind of plays into how, because the, the accepted proposal is basically make them just integers essentially yeah. um uh, if you read it i don't know if you have i, I haven't not. read it yet but okay so it, it makes it it's very trivial to implement for like 64 um right plastic it kind of plays it needs to like tie into zig support for arbitrary length size integers and so okay. lvm doesn't support that very well for integers larger than u128 currently and so we probably just want to use extra instructs for the foreseeable future for stuff like this, which yeah. I think is fine. Yeah. Also, it's important for our other data structures to make them compatible in the CABI yeah. um, for non-ZIG clients. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, flag, we must just uh, rename it to, or just add an S at the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then we can update our comp time assert 40, 48 plus the key size. Oh, yeah, 48. Okay. Yeah. Nice. We might be able to use flags for some statistics and things or uh, interesting. Yeah. I'm, I think having it will allow us to do a lot, will allow us to do useful things. We, I think we're pretty sure we'll be glad we have it in the future. Yeah. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Otherwise, we won't have any way to yeah. attach any metadata onto these tables. Yeah, exactly. And I also thought it's good to have it in table info in memory because we could otherwise put the flags into the index block, but um, it gets very expensive then. Yeah, to, like, we don't know, we don't know if that's flags. if it's always cached. Uh, we also need to go. I think a lot of this stuff we want to try and duplicate in our VSR headers like where we cross-reference stuff. Um, yeah. Because it can be very useful that it propagates. Although I don't, I don't know also, yeah. but um, yeah. We'll see as we, once we implement the recovery path, then we'll see what, if that helps. Yeah. That, that could be where like back references yeah. help. Cool. We probably want to, um, at some point, we really need to take those VSR header and make it a union. Um, yes, yes. Like yeah. we've been discussing. I actually wanted to ask your help, like how we um, we can we can do that and just check the, what the byte layout will be and just so I understand exactly how it works. And then once, yeah. we've, once we've got the layout of that, then... Um, I asked DJ if he if he can do the change to take our journal slots. At, did I tell you that already? Yeah. Yeah. So at the at the moment our journal slots are variable length, and then we record the index in right. the VSR, the offset in the VSR header. So I want to make our slots fixed length, limited to the size of message max. Uh, because right. yeah. That way, it means we seek a little bit as we append. We're, we're already in the area that we just move a little bit, um, but it means that our journal recovery is so much easier at startup. Everything becomes simpler. So, yeah. so as part of doing that change, I thought it would be a good time to go through VSR and change our header as well. Uh, cool. Anyway, we probably want to keep those like somewhat separate, but they're if you're already like doing one of those, you're kind of in the headspace to do the other one too. Yeah, that, that's what um, I thought. Yeah, we'll we'll do sep separate commits, um, but 
yeah. one after the other. Sure, but we can like sit down. Like once we finish this, that we can like sit down and discuss this. We can sit down and discuss that for a bit and like do a, yeah. like, a sketch out how it would look. Yeah. So most of the work is just like updating all the code to use the new things and maybe choose better names for some fields in some cases. Yeah. Um, we want basically like union fields depending on the command. Yeah. And some stuff won't be inside the union, like the checksum and then like the command will be what tags the union. Yeah. Determines what fields are active and then we'll have yeah. to document that pretty well and yeah. should work well. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, and drop, dropping yeah. that index field, offset field would also be great because then we can free that up to, um, then the leader will be able to pulse time through the cluster. Every, every VSR header is going to then have a timestamp, which means that yeah. the batch data doesn't have to have timestamps, which is very nice. So just doing a read query is going to pulse time through the whole cluster and the followers can then use that to do deterministic bookkeeping stuff yeah cool yeah. nice which that's which, pretty nice cleanup it'll, yeah. It'll, yeah it'll make our it'll make us doing like the bsr part of this code much easier too yes exactly. like yeah. i remember like our 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 abuse of bsr header fields in uh yeah yeah manifest stuff here yeah so we can maybe like in a week or so we can work that out and then dj can um, if he's keen, then he, he sure. could tackle that so long. Um, yeah, so the assertion we, failure we had here was um, node capacity mod 2 equals 0. Which means we have, now we have an odd number of table infos in our nodes, which we should probably deal with. Um, yeah. We can, actually pre we can probably just get rid of this assert, to be honest. It was kind of a check ourselves assert. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, mod to so, well, this is the only place we assert this. Okay. Um, and does it make a difference? Uh, it does for this redundant balance check we have, as this comment says. Uh, Otherwise, it doesn't though, because we do this correctly. Um, We can just delete this half here, um, or have other half, an other half variable, which is no capacity minus half. Um, we could have head and tail. Other half. <laughs> I think other, other half would just, it just sounds funny. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it isn't, it isn't, other, it isn't half anymore. Yeah. It's more like there's a head and a tail. Yeah. <clears throat> head tail equals new capacity minus head and then we can get rid of that assert I think we should probably just get rid of it, it makes things more generic and it'll yeah. still be pretty easy to make it work Yeah. and then we'll have this zero dot dot um, up to head tail. Uh, it's, I think it's up to head and then make this one tail Yeah. is that right then? And can we put node capacity in as well in the slice or not? No. <clears throat> it's already in there. Um, it's a pointer. <clears throat> Oops. <clears throat> um, tail dot dot. Is this right? What is this copying right now? Where are we at right now? Oh, it's so wrong actually. After the node being split. Yeah, it's, it's copying like undefined data at the end of the node, isn't it? It also uses yeah. use the count. We actually um, we have to use the same. No. We have to use the no, same. No, actually, it's right. But we have to use the same split point. No, you're saying the head and tail is wrong here. Mm, we have to use the same one in both here, cases. Yeah, here, here, the end of. We have, we know that the node, the pointer is pointing to, is completely full. Mm. That means array counts equals node capacity, as we assert here. Mm. So this open-ended slice is fine. Um, so we're copying from zero head. So I think 
new one we're inserting after this note, so we should be cupping from head onwards here. Mm. Yeah. You, um, no, no, you, know that, was... you know what I think, Isaac? I think if we if we what? have, we should have half as a half. I think node capacity should always be, because otherwise we're going to get confused later when we try to merge stuff with remove. We're gonna it's going to be very weird to think about if it's not exactly fifty fifty. So, so then then one way to do that is if the node size. You know, we basically just go down, and if it isn't, then we minus one again to get node capacity. So we rather go back to using half with our assertion, and then we fix it up, up at the top. We just change our node capacity calculation. So we just lose data from our nodes. It's like dropping a whole table info per node. Yeah. The thing is, it's I'm not convinced uh, that it's really that hard. One, one um, table, one table info over over one node is like it's zero point zero nine percent. So, really? Yeah, it's not really. How big are our nodes? Yeah, that's a okay. sixty-four kilobyte yeah, that's node. Fine. You know? Just bring back this insert, and so we don't have to think about it. Um, yeah, it does make it easier to make the code correct. Yeah. So, sure, let's do that. Yeah, even if this we have. This is going to be instead. Yeah, even if we have um, 128 byte table info nodes and we have a small node size of 16 kilobytes, it's still less than a percent. And then we're, we're looking at 100. Okay. I think we're looking at 256 megs in RAM. So. Which is going to be two megs. Four is not the way to fix this. Yeah. How do we fix this up? Um, I wanted to use div floor, but that wasn't the right way to fix it. Yeah. Um, we we need to do what we've got there, and then we need an if on that result. So we almost need a block that we break out of. So we yeah. need to need to fix up that result. Test test if it's evenly divisible. If it is, then we um, then we're fine. Otherwise, we subtract one and assert that it's still greater than zero. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. So we, we want kind of like a div exact within catch. So we, let's just say like if yeah. node, node pool. You nodes. can do that with the standard lib in math. I'm just going to do mo the simple mod. Okay. I don't need to call any functions, I don't think. Yeah. Least, I think it's simpler to do it this way. Okay. Um, well, with the equals zero. Like, this is just plainly readable code. Yeah. Um, um, now we can use dip exact. It, it isn't actually quite what we want the semantic. What, what we really want to do is know what is node capacity the result and check is node capacity divisible by two. Oh, you're right, yeah. Okay, so let's do that then. So, uh, max, const max yeah. equals if max mod 2 equals 0 x else is that good now? yeah that's cool and then we should actually have a comp time assert on node capacity that it's um, right great. here we have one down below we should add one here as well I guess yeah yeah um,
and above that we should check also that it's greater than zero. Shall we document it, like why we'd require the... Sure. So we do that in here, mm. maybe? Yeah. Um, we... Er, yeah, we require that. Divisible by two, so that um, we have to simplify. Simplify node yes. split slash joins nodes at the midpoint. Or joins. Yeah, split that splits joins nodes at the midpoint. That's it. That's good, yeah. Yeah. All right, shall we test it then? Yeah. It might take a bit to run now. Yeah. We are doing like a very ridiculously large thing. Yeah. It's also debug mode. I mean, I should run it in release. Yeah. Shouldn't take that long though. We are doing like, yeah, it's like exponential runtime now because the the more elements, the more every iteration that we might insert a whole lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, we've we've really made this take a while, haven't we? <laughs> um, would you like to wait for it to finish, or shall we abort it and try it and release fast? Or yeah, maybe let's let's try in release fast and see. We're really fair. safe, I guess, so we get the yeah. assertion failure, so it uh, actually fails. Of course, yeah. But I don't know how much optimization will help this code, to be honest. Probably probably a good bit, mm -hmm. but it's also, it's, it's mostly like the algorithm that makes it fast, not the, like the the CPU optimization. It's not like CPU. Yeah. This CPU bottleneck cared, I guess. We'll see. Yeah. How many iterations are we actually running here? It might actually run until tomorrow. <laughs> um, maybe. We've got 32,000 elements. Element yeah. count max. So that's going to be how many nodes then? Well, how many table inputs fit in one of these nodes? Yeah, maybe. Just a maybe, lot of it. Maybe that was too ambitious. <laughs> I think I think that is going to take a long time. Yeah, it's it's basically. Have you, you seen? Try with like, yeah, let's do. Have you seen the Iron Man? Uh, Iron Man one. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. It's like I think of it like the Iron Man test when he he first gets his suit flight worthy. And then he just tries to see how... He flies up to the sky uh, and freezes. <laughs> yeah, just to see what he learns, you know. Yeah, this is basically the same. <laughs> yeah. The Iron Man test. Yeah, I think this might take too long. Yeah. You ready yeah. to kill it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's do Mach, Mach 2. So let's maybe use a slightly no smaller node size. Um, like, maybe like... 256. 4096. Yeah. 96. And then here, like, this seems like a reasonable large test case. Mm. <laughs> That's also, like, instant. Cool. Mm. 42,000 inserts and removes. How, how does it run if we remove uh, release safe? 
probably feels about the same speed because it'll just take less. Yeah. Yeah. It just feels the same speed because it just takes so much less time to compile. Mm. Um, so we can like double both of these at least. Um, uh, it was eight one forty ninety six, man. Eight one. What is it? It's uh, eight one nine two. Eight one nine two. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Is that or not one nine two? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's our nice. new bug bounty award eight one nine two. Nice four four zero nine six. Yeah, I'm good up to one hundred and twenty eight kilobytes. One that's one three one zero seven two. I've got it memorized. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That still runs pretty fast, and that gives us 350,000 inserts and removes. Yeah. I think it's pretty impressive. Yeah. In deep mug mode, too. Yeah. It just, nice. just takes a few seconds. Like three or four seconds. Yeah. So how, many, we... how many gig terabytes of 340,000, or 350,000 table infos? Uh, uh, okay, uh, so it's like 500,000 times 100, uh, so 500,000, 5 million, 50 million, 50 megs. Yeah, 30, 30, 30 megs. Yeah. Let, let me work okay. out a bit better. Uh, 349124. Um, we've got 8 byte keys plus checksum plus. 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 is so table info is 64 bytes sometimes. Uh, three okay. nine, one, two, four, type 64. So we're looking at 22 megs. Yeah. A bandwidth, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Like how many table yeah. we insert and removed. Cool. That seem good. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's maybe here like we pay more for the branch, the uh, branch mispredict. Oh, yeah. I think we definitely make this a lot faster by doing batch um, inserts and removes. Um, yeah, yeah. It's probably our next our next objective. We should, do you want to just like, um, I think what we should do now is like add like a few more test cases here, seem reasonable, and then do a commit with yeah. this working. Yeah. Um, I think so. And then we, we can, do you want to start? with batch stuff on on Monday morning yeah that sounds good to me cool we could also sketch sketch out just a little bit of an if else branch flow like I was thinking of that this morning um, anyway yeah like just a few a few different cases like say we were because we know we're always inserting up to a node so like here's one case we inserting into a node in the middle and the node can accommodate everything uh, and we can just yeah. li li like list all the different examples yeah because there's not that many of them though because mm -hmm. we've decided to limit our insert to uh, the number of elements in a node which i think is a really good call to simplify things and we don't need that in practice to insert more than a node we don't need anywhere close to that in practice i don't think no um no. yeah no, uh, it was a great call. Cool. Yeah. So let's just fix up our test case here to make this like reasonable. So it makes node size and level and cancel a bit smaller. Like all of you can just undo those, put them back down to 4096 and 1024. So that's yeah. still like near instant. And then it gives us like a pretty realistic test case for um, our usage. Yeah. And then does this add padding at the end? It does. Yeah. So we've already we've tested now with padding as well. Um, or padding at the end of the nodes. Yeah. Let me see. So it's 32 plus 32. Yeah, there should be padding there. Yeah, we can also assert that um, we, could, we could do something like this where we have like a um, var um, has or tried with padding. Yeah equals false test our test mm. um and then here we can say if um 
options dot node size mod size of um, options dot element type not equal to oops not equal to zero um, tried with tried with padding equals true and yeah. here we can try testing that, that, that we can actually just assert if you like you mean this here uh, oh you mean oh yeah this can be an insertion i see yeah yeah, yeah. shall we call it uh, uh just shall we call it uh, tested padding um yeah sure that's it okay um so we try uh, that yeah maybe we could well, yeah yeah passes and if we delete this does it still does it fail that's like the other thing to try yeah yeah nice nice <laughs> good good call on the testing the test yeah we did this before with like the icing or stuff i think and it really helped us to test the tests yeah yeah we added it after we realized our test wasn't testing <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. test is doing some good testing though yeah I was thinking what we could do is to make node size a little bit smaller for table info and do like 1024 so okay. that, that we're crossing node boundaries more often. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's just more stress on the hard code. Yeah. Are we still touch with padding then? Let's see. I think it will. Yeah. Yep, we still got our padding. Nice. Now we get a. Well, we could probably get about the same number of inserts and removes. Yeah. It's still 11,000 inserts and removes for that, so that's good. Yeah. I'm going to turn off log before I forget about it. Um, yeah. Actually, let's do that with the very last, probably. Any other like cases you want to test? Um, maybe make this one like a little bit. Oh, we should like try one with like one with elements per node equals one. Um, yeah. We yeah, have element type is U32, definitely, node yeah. size 4. Um, let's see if that works. Oh, yeah, we, it has to be 2 at least, because otherwise... Uh, well, what assertion failed here, actually? What happened here? We got an assertion failure um, in div seal. Uh. So we should probably actually change our assert up here. Right now we should assert um, this is greater than 0, but really should be greater than or equal to 2, I think. Yeah. Otherwise, you can't do a meaningful half, right? Yeah. Um, and now we should get, just get a compile error there. I guess we get the assertion failure there first. Mm. We can't really get around that there because that's just like time uh, order evaluation is not defined. I. Uh, you know what, Isaac? Uh, it's in min elements per node. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's so the, do you think we should insert it here too? It's it's you can also just assert no or mean elements per node. But so we like assert on node capacity in here. Oh, we guess we can just do our asserts up here actually. Mm. Um let's do that maybe. Let's move these asserts in here, because then we'll get that those run before we get to that block down there. Um This one can stay in this content block though. That's 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 separate. Uh, maybe it shouldn't actually just leave them together here. But okay. won't, the, won't the break jump out of those? Uh, okay. I'm about to change that. Okay. Um, max, else, max. In this case, the if expression actually fits nicely on one line, so I was just going to do it like that. Yeah. That's that's nice. Yeah. That seemed good? Yep, that's great. And then we should get that uh, we need to, out instead of having. We need to. One, no. Break out. Local shadows declaration. Yeah. We can just call it capacity and we need to break it out. Yeah. Penalty loop detected. Uh, element, uh, count, element count max. No. Oh, that's weird. Mean elements per node. New capacity for two. 
Node count max. It's because this type uses both of them, I think. That's annoying. I think that's just a compiler bug, to mm. be honest. Um, or just a, yeah. It's not like a bug that would cause us to have any miscompilation or anything. It's just that it's not compiling something that could compile mm. because um, it doesn't handle. So the problem is that this this first, the, okay, so this, there's two like separate types here, but for some reason, um, it's thinking that both of these are required to be known to know the size of this type, where it really only doesn't need to know either of them. It only needs to know the size of a pointer to know the size. Yeah. Of this struct field. Yeah. Um, That's true. So, I guess I'll just undo what I just did. <laughs> um, which is sad because it was, it was nicer. Yeah. Let me see if I can. What actually caused that to trigger? Maybe it's been the element count. Let's try like one other thing first. Um, let me redo some more things, I think. Um, um, alt shift redo. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Let me just move this one out. Does this then work? Then we need to call it um, node capacity. Unreachable code capacity grief from the two. So you're giving me assertion failure now. Yeah. Um, because we saw that test case, but that yeah. seems promising. It didn't compile error. Yeah. Oh, so we actually have node size equals two. Uh, that's Can in check bytes. Than two for some reason. Uh, that's node size in bytes. Oh, two two bytes. Yeah. It should be eight. eight. Yeah. Oh, what happened here? It's another another bug. Um, perhaps. <laughs> Assert b equals node count minus one, three oh nine. We ended up with an empty node that wasn't the last node in the array somehow. Oh, I know what this is. Yeah, because we're moving one element from a node that's half full makes it empty. Um, we've already done the remove and subtract one from the count. Yeah. Um, which makes it, which just made it empty. So interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, what's the right fix here? I think the right fix is to check if it's the last node first, and then we just can't do this assert, sadly. Um, it's another overzealous assert that forgot about this one case where you could have a node where half is one. Yeah. Um, which which assert is it, Isaac, exactly, that fails? Uh, the one This on assert right here, that's failing. Line one, yeah. Um, and the problem is that our if our node size is two has two elements, mm. um, that means that it's valid to have a node with just one element, which means that when then when you remove that one element, and we decrement counts here already, then everything was okay. But here we see that it's empty, and then we assert that it was the last node because okay. we expected that only the last node can have only one element and be less than half full. But it turns out that. I don't know, it's can. One, having one element can be the same as being half full in the case of a two capacity node. Okay. Maybe we should just add the exception to the assertion then. So say yeah. it's, it's the last node um, or um, node capacity equals two. Right. I'm just looking really briefly if whether... Does this still work? The remove empty node at if... I guess it does, yeah. This will handle. Uh, this will handle. This handles removing nodes in the middle of the array too. So it really mm -hmm. is just that, um, or um, node capacity equals two. 
Yeah. Yeah. That should fix it. And we can, yeah. Nice. Great. So three bugs. Uh. Here, yeah, three assertion bugs. Mm. I'm glad we tested that case with just two elements that mm. did show us something. And, and the, the bugs um, are, are not really like the assertions. It's more showing that our understanding wasn't complete. Like, yeah, we didn't anticipate. But this. our code yeah. actually doesn't. If we hit, if we had deleted all the assertions, our code actually would have worked fine. Which is what yeah. I'm holding on to is from our point. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but I mean, it <laughs> but you're could, right. We didn't it, understand it fully. We we might the code might not have worked fine. Also, like we kind of lucky that we That's had true. it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So far, we've gotten lucky. Um, yeah. Also, this will be important to. Is the node capacity equal to actually write? I think for right now it is write, but. Yeah, when we if we do like bulk remove, uh, batch removes, then it won't be write anymore. Yeah. Because then you could remove potentially everything in a node. Um, yeah. I mean. So to, in order to make this um, like easier to adapt for batch removes, it would actually make more sense to um, check if it's the last node first. And then if it is the last node, check if it's empty and then do the remove. I think. Or just get rid of this assert entirely. Uh, but for, for now, this is correct. So we, let's leave this and then our batch stuff okay. is, is going to be in addition to these methods. Okay, true. And then right, because still, still, this will always work for just single ML removes. And what we'll do is we'll yeah. just optimize this. We'll <clears> just replace this with a a separate path, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But then we can then delete this and replace this with a batch. We can then wrap or implement this in terms of the batch from yeah, exactly. Then. Exactly. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But it's so still leave this then. It's still valuable to have yeah. this, and we can commit it in, and then we've got another. We can also test them against each other to start with. Yeah. Um, yeah. They they will produce different results. Uh, so still the the reference is a good way to test them because other yeah. uh, if we expected them to produce exact results we could then test verbatim like how they split the nodes and everything but it will be different so we, we couldn't really probably yeah no. shall we just update this comment and say um, there is a special case if um, The last node. Um, not that we don't allow any node to become empty, is that we don't. Um, let's just talk about a special case. Um, well, it kind of contradicts this comment. This comment's just like not really taking into account that nodes could have yeah. two capacity. Yeah. Um, since we um, join nodes that become less than half all, um, Other than the last node, we do not expect Apple. to see an empty node here unless it is the empty last node. Here, unless um, it is the last node. node. Uh, yeah. Or is exactly two two elements. A 
the second part of the comment doesn't seem useful to me. I'm not sure why we put, wrote this. If the last node becomes empty, there may be other non-empty nodes. Um, Otherwise, we can change the comment and just say, um, um, if node capacity is two, then, and the node was half full, then removing a single element makes the node empty. And then we can say, otherwise, we only allow the tail node to be empty. Um, and we just removed, um, made the node empty. Yeah. Otherwise, we only expect, or, or we only allow the tail node to be empty. To, um, Oh, it's to be empty. Full. Yeah. So okay, cool. Okay. Only to be last. Could have become empty. Yeah, that's it. Is nice. that good? Yeah. I think that's great. another way of saying. Yeah. Um. And then I think we just delete this stuff too, right? Yeah. Well. Any other test cases we want to add? I think this is kind of, kind of covers it, I feel like. So we'd add a few more elements here. It doesn't take that long to run. Or, yeah. Well, we can, we can double these two elements at least. We make them like 5, 12 or something. So they're like trivially fast to yeah. run currently. Yeah. What, what we could do is do one with table info where node size because table info has got padding so it's interesting the u32 and capacity of two is is pretty easy but let's see if we can do it for table info as well what is the size of table info times two um uh this specific table info is uh 48 plus 32 so 80, then we need to get that to a power of 2. So times 2 is 160. So let's make node size 256. Because it has to be a power of 2. Yeah. Let's see if that has padding real quick. Yeah. Okay, so that passed. So it has padding and it passed. So that's yeah. good. And um, shall we disable the U32 node capacity two case and then we can disable that one and then go back to our assertion and make it over tight again okay nice yeah um yeah i'm just going to yeah. add this as well yeah um we can, we can, we can do that first actually because otherwise this won't work yeah um, we cool just to check that we we covering it like this as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay, nice. We got it. Yeah. Oh, uh, we can be a little bit more tricky even. Uh, well, not really. Yeah, that's sort of the best. I was thinking we could make it node capacity three that will get rounded down to two, and then, but it doesn't work. Yeah. Context. That node capacity. I just want to add another one of these for this. Yeah. Maybe let's just call it capacity min. Min, sure. Okay. 
Yeah, and then that variable also on where we set it to true, we just need to rename that Very one. Good. Yeah, and I was thinking also up top we've got min elements per node, and that one we should actually rename to elements per node min to put it as the suffix. You only, you only see it like internally here though. Yeah. I've messed it up here. Yeah. Then we also need to make capacity. Oh, it is public. Oh, I see. Um, you can access it from there very easily. Yeah. Context, test context. Um, should we make like this test array type public maybe? Um, I want to like test that the capacity gets hit, so I just make this public. Cool. Or just put it in here so I can access it. Yeah. Um, I really like these test assertions that we're testing what we're testing. <laughs> yeah, I like them too. They're cool. Yeah. Uh, I just did that. Stop complaining. Compiler, there we go. Uh, should we do like the other ones too, just to make it like more consistent with the style? Just like put all the stuff down inside. Yeah. Here. I think maybe we could make the we could separate the testing namespace from the types. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think log could also come up top, maybe. Yeah. And then do that to types. And we could put node pool above test array, because test array depends on node, the test test node pool. Or basically just move test array down oh, after yeah. test node pool. Like this? Yeah, and maybe we could add a new line before node node alignment. This one's also an import, so maybe we should make move it up with testing. Yeah. Like have our two imports up there. Yeah. Or, I um, think here, like this is fine, probably. Yeah. Then we've got like our types grouped and our namespaces grouped. Do we have node alignment anywhere else in this test, test context? Do we use it? No, no. No, okay. let's just put that in line, right? Yeah. Um, Maybe put those two next to each other then? Yeah. All right. Are you happy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do think, um, so we call us, uh, we've got node pool, we've got segmented array, and segmented array becomes test array. So I kind of think we should just make a test pool and test array. And we, because oh. it's just the test here. Sure. And then our, in the test also, I think upstairs it's nice how we say node pool because we've got quite a few different node things. But here in the test context, I think we can just call it pool. Pool, test pool, array, test sure. array, test array. Oh, you mean rename the, the field as well? Yeah, that one, yeah. That's upstairs now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, whoops. Okay, so test. Context only in this. Scale. Yeah, yeah. That should do it. Mm. Or not. Oh yeah. Right. That yeah. still works. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we could try like. Uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Just. I think it just seems like nice to do those like after we test the things. So we don't. So testing is in the past tense. Yeah. Um. 
maybe we should go into context.run and in there we must assert that the number of inserts and removes are greater than z zero. We assert that and remove all, I think. Uh, okay. Okay, cool. And turn off logging, I think. Yeah. I think we're ready to commit this. Yeah. And one more zig format run. Format dash to make sure. Ooh, that's, that's the wrong zig format. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Manifest level is the only one in node pool. We've also touched node pool. Um, it's coming into arrays. Or oh, we've added, we've touched utils as well, actually. And now we can get restore dot. What all have we got? In manifest level, we've changed a few minor things. In node pool, we've also changed a few minor things. Utils, or this is not, this is taking me to the array now. Yeah. Important direction, temporarily. Um, fixed some um, declarations here, tighten up asserts, I guess. Yeah. Did a few naming changes. Fix the alloc here stuff, compile errors, compile errors. Did a, things a bit differently here. It's all node pool stuff. Lots of bug, bug fixes. Stuff. Bug fixes and tests. Yeah. Um, and then all we did in utils was remove these two things. Yeah. All right. So I'll move that out off the screen. Um, now, uh, I guess we only have this one WP commit for the segmented array um, tests and bug fixes, so we can just uh, re reword that. Or, actually, the, is the date like weird? It's only like yesterday, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, um... Maybe let, we, let's keep it in right. our LSM namespace still. Until we pull it out and use it elsewhere. What do you think? Sure, do you want to like fix up the other ones where we have it with just segmented array then? Uh, um, okay. You can yeah. like reword those in a second. Yeah. Just for consistency if you like. Yeah. Um, Um, buzz, test, segmented, array, and fix bugs. Yeah. Anything else we want to say there? No. I think, I think that's good. Um, I think these ones, we just reword them. Well, just to make the prefix, yeah. um, right, else, um, Input insertion for segmented array. Nice. Okay, now we've got effects everywhere. And, um, yeah. Cool. I think this is good. Awesome. I had one idea, maybe our segmented array test. Let's um, just go into it quickly and see uh, where we've got table info with node size 256. Let's make element count max yes. 2, or I think we need to make it 4. That's the, or 3. 3 would be the minimum that it could be. We could really? let's. We allow yeah. that? Yeah. 
You do allow that. Yeah. Let, let's try with two. I think that will get caught by our comp time assertion. Oh, okay. Can we not get hit this assert? Can we have like an assert here? Mm. Oh, it can be equal to node capacity. Element count max. Um. Hmm. So we should change the assert to make it greater than. Yeah. Yep, now we've hit it. Okay. Cool. And then shall we do, um, in our test, let's make element count max 3. See if that runs. Nope. Because node capacity is... Did I really write that? Sorry, that did run. I just... Uh, I, I okay. missed my key binding. I didn't actually write the file to disk. Yeah. Um, okay. Shall we try well, like um, with four? Because then four, we've got two nodes with two. Okay. We can. Do you want to leave these in like permanently, like three and four? Yeah, maybe that's a better like edge case, you know. Just have both of them. It's not very expensive. Yeah. Should we also have them one with like two fifty with like ten twenty four as well? Yeah. Um I mean these things aren't that expensive it seems. No. Cool. So we could also do it for U thirty two, where we test element count max of three. Just to get Sure, um, yeah. I don't know if we can explore the upper boundary some more for those. What do you mean by the upper boundary? So with, I guess it's basically element count max is exactly an equal number of nodes. But we already have that with a 512. So that's fine. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just made us a few small changes. Mm. We'll just amend this commit. Yeah. Uh, uh, before we do, Isaac, uh, should we just do one more tweak? How's the runtime? Sure. Is the runtime like okay? Is it acceptable? If we're going to be pretty, doing it's, it's pretty good. Okay, cool. Where were the caching's not working there? Okay, cool. I was just wondering if we could get uh, trim any of those. I think it's good, right? Mm. Do you have anything else you want to add? Or are you happy with this now? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Cool. Now... Um, amend that into our commit. Now we've got no on stage changes. Yep. Push it. Oh, I need a forest post because I've changed it the previous commits. Okay. But yeah. Nice. So I thought, cool. what do you think? Maybe Monday we could do... Um, I thought we could try and just go through our logic 
just quickly and try and break a few things. Check that our fuzzer is catching the obvious. It's getting enough coverage of the, the big branches. Sure, yeah. Just very quick. Yeah, and then we can jump into the batch stuff on Monday. Sounds good. Yeah, and maybe right. just, just to explore those cases and maybe we'll realize, okay, we don't get much gain anyway. Uh, yeah, we'll probably need some way to benchmark it, um, but we should definitely at least explore how complex it is first. Yeah. I think it could be some significant gain. Yeah. Um, like it pretty much amortizes the whole copies over the whole batch. Yeah. Um, so you only do one copy instead of 10 copies to insert 10 elements, which yeah. I think is really a significant gain, probably. Yeah. Um, so if we're looking at like 22 tables times 128 bytes, and uh, we're going to be shifting other data around each time. Yeah. Right, because yeah. our copies are basically going to be on average half a node in size, I think. Yeah. Um, so pretty big. Yeah. And if you do like 10 of those instead of one of them, it makes a difference. Yeah. Um, cool. I think it's going to be worth it. I think it won't be too bad either. Yeah. Um, we know yeah. Yes, and our code's a lot, a lot better than it was. So I'm, I'm pretty confident we can, we can make that happen. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I'll sign us off. Uh, it's been a good, good week. Nice to cool. be back. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the tag yeah, nice work. Yeah. Yeah. Tiger Beetle sessions Friday, 28th of January, 2022, uh, session 13. Have an awesome weekend.